And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wolverine Radio's coverage of Wolverine High School Baseball. Today, the Grizzled Wolverines take on the Plainfield Panthers. We are here at uh, Plain- Plainfield Panther Stadium in Plainford up uh, by uh, Shepherd Hill Park or Shepherd Hill School. Uh, myself, Mike Wanarski, and uh, Kevin Merchant. We are here live. And uh, uh, Kev, uh, one uh, one word to describe today, and that is Wet. Wet. Uh, not much different than yesterday afternoon when the uh, Griswold girls softball team uh, shut out the Plainfield Panther sh- softball team 15 to nothing yesterday right. afternoon. And it was, uh, Michael, it was miserable. It was miserable out there. And uh, it seems like the rain stopped for the moment, but we've uh, had off and on showers here for the last hour or so since we've been here. But the umpires and coaches are on the field right now going over ground rules. They removed the tarp from the pitcher's mound and the the batting circle, and uh, we're we're uh, almost ready to go here, Michael. It should be uh, it should be an interesting game this afternoon. Good uh, ECC Division Three game, and both teams are are uh, pretty excited. Uh, obviously, Griswold and Plainfield are, are big rivals uh, in all sports. So uh, today, everybody's uh, looking for a win. Yeah, and Grizzlies won five in a row, so they're they're on a on a big time winning streak, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a really great game. Even though the rain seems like it's kind of subdued for right now, uh, but uh, according to uh, our, uh, our 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 weather person, uh, uh, Mrs. The Merch. Uh, she <laughs> she says that uh, who's currently that, putting up our Grizzly Wolverine um, radio sign. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's going to rain till uh, close to two o'clock today. Then it should be nice. But the weather forecast today was was supposed to be uh, pretty good. It's supposed to be uh, in the mid to higher sixties, sunny skies, and uh, we didn't get any of that. Scott Haney, who I believe it, him every once in a while, <laughs> a couple days ago, said this was going to be the better day of the weekend. And obviously, this is hopefully not the better day of the weekend because that would bode well, bode, bode not so well for tomorrow. But it sounds like tomorrow's going to be a nice day. But uh, we just missed it by a day, that's all. Yeah. So Plainfield has taken the field uh, to get ready for the top of the first. Griswold, of course, is the visiting team today. Uh, you want to go down the, down the lineups real quick, even though you did it on Facebook Live? Uh, I would certainly Just like for to the, do the that. Griswold lineup. Okay, we'll do the Griswold lineup starting off here. We have Max Gregory, uh, who will be starting off at shortstop. Bryce Molesky will be on the mound for the Wolverines. He's been pitching well for them lately. Uh, Stephen Murphy will be behind the plate. Nate Tedeschi batting fourth in center field. Nick Gilo playing third base. Jared Stramiska, who uh, pitched him, uh, pitched the Wolverines out of a real jam their last game against uh, St. Bernard's, I believe, where they had the bases loaded and uh, pitched well. Jared will be playing first. Brendan Doyle will be in right field. Zach Longiel will be the left fielder. And rounding out the lineup is Alan Rondo, who will be playing second base today. Very good. Okay, the uh, Plainfield hurler just... Uh about uh, ready to start uh, finishing up his warm-up tosses. Uh, Plainfield, of course, in the home whites uh, with the orange lettering and the orange numbers on their jerseys and the orange socks. And Grizzled with the away jerseys wearing the dark green jerseys. Uh, Looks like, uh, you know, the white, well, of course, the the white pants and the oh, black those lettering. aren't going to last very long today, Michael. No, 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 no. You're, you're very right. You're right, Merch. Uh, we have uh, Matt DeRozier on the mound for the for the Plainfield Panthers. He's a he's a junior uh, pitcher for Plainfield. He also plays some outfield. Um, I don't have his uh, his pitching record, but um, we'll see here in a few minutes. We have uh, two two very good teams. Uh, Griswold comes in with a six and two record. Four and zero in the uh, ECC Division Three. Five in a row wins and five wins in a row, and they um, are five and two in the ECC overall. And Plainfield comes in with an overall record of five and three, three and three overall in the ECC, and three and one in ECC Division Three. So this is the divisional game, a four and zero team playing a three three and one team. So um, we're looking forward to a to a good game this afternoon. And here's the first pitch of the ball game, and uh, Gregory Nett knocks it to short. Long throw over to first, the scoop. And uh, Gregory is out at first. One quick out, one pitch, one out for the Wolverines here in the top of the first. Coming up to bat, pitching today, Bryce Molesky. Usually plays shortstop when he's not pitching, but uh, today he's on the mound. Pitched a heck of a game last time out. 
I tell you that uh, London. first first uh, hit by Gregory, <coughs> the shortstop Dalton Smith went to his right and and slipped at first first play, but he made a nice pickup and nice throw to first base. His first pitch into Bryce fastball straight in strike one. That mound's got to be tricky out there, Merch. Well, you know, thank goodness they covered it for a little while, so I think that helped. But after yesterday, after yesterday and today. Um, it's just wet. It's just wet out there. Second pitch from Dalton is low. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Bryce Molesky, the grizzled pitcher today. Bryce Molesky is batting 448 so far in the season. Um, and, and I, Michael, I, I mentioned before that um, I looked at the stats today, and it's it's astonishing. They have five, uh, nine players batting over 300. That's... that's um, uh... And most of them are well over 300. The, the lowest one is Nick Gilo at 304. <laughs> and then from there, the next, the next is uh, there's a couple, couple uh, players batting 333, then 346. Then we'll go through that. But um, I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that before, where there are so many players hitting so well. One and two to Molesky. He just followed the last pitch off, and uh, here's the wind from Dalton and the pitch curveball. And that's going to be hit right up the middle, base hit right past the shortstop. And uh, into left center field. So Molesky is on uh, with a base hit. So that 4-4-4 four, four, four average just uh, got a boost. Right. Nice line drive by Bryce. The lefty, he handles that bat really well. Really great back control. So up comes uh, Stephen Murphy, the full-bearded catcher. Uh, straight from the outback today. <laughs> <laughs> Grizzled senior, batting third. And uh, he's behind the plate. He's the battery mate for Bryce Molesky today. Stephen Murphy batting 346. As a pickoff attempt over to first base, Molesky dives in back safely. We're just getting underway here in Plainfield. Griswold is up to bat. There's one out, and Bryce Molesky on first. And uh, getting some attention from uh, Dalton on the hill as he's thrown over a couple of times to try to keep Bryce... Uh, uh, a little honest on the base pass. <laughs> there goes Molesky, and there's a pop-up in the infield. Molesky's got to hurry up and get back oh, to there. first, and the pitcher, DeRozier, actually calls it and uh, makes the catch. And uh, there was uh, a little little confusion there because normally normally you would not want your pitcher to make the play right. if it's if it's high. Uh, it was a high pop up, plenty high enough for either the shortstop, uh, either third base and first baseman, or possibly even shortstop to get. And uh, third baseman uh, Mike Bates and and uh, DeRosia were kind of both after that ball, and DeRosia had taken it. But there's foul ball. Out of play. The center fielder, Nate Tedeschi. Nate, Nate, this is crazy. Uh, Nate's batting 480. That's all. Just 480. Just 480. 12 for 25. Um, yeah. Molesky on first. His uniform is no longer white. <laughs> After diving back a couple of times into first. Like a sweeping curve on the inside, missing. Yeah, the one ball, plain, one strike. Plainfield bench, well, they they weren't so sure that was a ball um, from the from the sounds of it over there. Two outs in the top of the first. DeRozier looking in for the sign, pitching from the stretch, and here comes the pitch. That ball is high. Two balls, one strike. Tedeschi's got some wheels. If he gets on, if he can get going. He could yeah, fly. They, they got some good speed. I mean, Gregory's quick. Mick, Nick Gilo's quick. Uh, Bryce out there is quick. And we just got uh, two buckets of water dumped from our easy up. Um, <laughs> and the other half bucket. <laughs> Maybe we ought to move the table back. I, a don't, bit. I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> it got a little windy all of a sudden. <laughs> Here we are in the, in the middle of November playing baseball, it seems like. There's a pitch from DeRozier and... Uh, Swing and a miss by, uh, kind of like he chopped at it a little bit. Yeah, that was uh, a cutter or something. Hit that outside corner. Two balls, uh, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the first inning. Molesky on first base with a uh, with a one-out single. And uh, here's the pitch from Matt DeRozier. There's a bouncer to third. 
And uh, he's going to pick it up, and he bobbles the ball and uh, loses the handle of it. And that's, you're going to see a little bit of that today, especially with uh, uh, it being so wet and messy out there. Every ball you pick up, Michael, every, you, as we know, every ball is going to be wet. So you really have to be prepared for that. You have to catch yeah. that in your, almost catch it in your palm and move it, or, or take it in your palm and move it to your fingers before, as you're throwing it because it's... Um, Everyone is going to be wet. I mean, every pitch the pitcher makes is it's going to that ball is not going to be dry. Two down, Nick Gilo into the box. Runners on first and second. Tedeschi reaching on an error, and uh, Molesky on second reaching on a reaching on a one out base hit. Here's the uh, Drozier steps off of the mound, steps off the rubber. Nick Gilo, uh, the, the lowest uh, batting average for the top, and that happens to be 304. Which is not bad. Yeah, it is great. Are you kidding me? 300 um, to start the season off. He is. Uh... First pitch from uh, from DeRozier, a little bit of an off speed pitch. Gilo, a little bit ahead of it, strike one. Nick is 7 for 23 at 304. And... Swing and a miss, strike two. Now you think about it, 304 really in the major leagues equates, oh to, equates to a $14 million a year contract. That's right. You know? That's right. So you he's have, on track. You have a 300 hitter, and uh, you, you never want to trade that guy. Gila, good athlete, plays basketball as well for the Wolverines. And here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, and that gets DeRozier and the Plainfield Panthers out of the inning. Griswold uh, gets a couple of people aboard, but uh, cannot score. We're going to go to the bottom of the first in a wet and wild game here at Plainfield High School. Griswold nothing, Plainfield coming to bat. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. Don't just wish for a winning deal. Make it dish and we'll make it real. Don't just wish. Make it dish. Hey, everyone. This is Ellis Dish from Dish Motors. We're back better than ever with our new sales and service center on Route 32 in North Franklin. Everyone says there's nothing better than dealing with the dishes, and here's why. Selection. We have the area's largest inventory of off-lease, one-owner vehicles of all makes and models. You name it, we got it, or I'll get it for you at no additional charge. Quality. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous 120-point safety and quality check. Nothing leaves the lot without my personal approval. Convenience. We have financing sources for almost any situation. We offer on-site registration processing, and we have maintenance programs for years of stress-free owner. And now open for all your maintenance needs, our full-service repair facility, where oil changes start at just $19.99. Call today for your appointment or just stop by. So save thousands and deal with the dishes. Route 32, North Franklin. Online, thriftycarsct.com or ring us, 860-383-4750. And we're back once again at Plainfield High School. Uh, just underway, we played a half inning of ball between the Plainfield Panthers and your grizzled Wolverines. Uh, no score uh, as of, uh, well, Grizzle didn't score in the top of the first, even though they got a couple of people on. Uh, Kevin Merchant has the lineup for the Plainfield Panthers. For the home team Panthers, we have Mike Bates leading off and playing third base. Jack Goble will be batting second, playing right field. Isaiah Thompson's at uh, second base and batting third. Chris Peasley will be playing first base and cl- at the cleanup hitter. Matt DeRozier on the mound, batting fifth. Alex DeAngelis will be the designated hitter this afternoon. Keegan Marcoux batting seventh and playing left field. Ben Leach behind the plate batting eighth. And Brendan Ogden will be uh, batting ninth and playing center field. All right. Oh, go ahead. Dalton, Dalton Smith is, uh, is going to be the flex player. He is playing shortstop uh, this, this afternoon. The weather just makes it, it just feels like it's the middle of November. Yeah, it's it's cold. And since the rain stopped, I think it's just gotten much colder here. With uh, uh, the orange uh, colors on the Panthers' uniforms, I'm waiting for the Great Pumpkin to show up. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, well, it is that this, time of year, right? Don't, don't no, make fun no. of them, because this is your listening area, Michael. So, you know, you gotta you got to support those Panthers, you know. Oh, we do. I know, I know. Uh, Panthers come in at, at a, with an overall record of 5-3. and three. Uh, They are... Three and three overall in the ECC, and three and one in Division Three, of which both uh, Plainfield and Griswold are both in Division Three. Griswold and Lyman, I believe, are tied for the lead of Division Three at four and zero, oh, and Plainfield is right behind at three and one. Here's Mike Bates. He's going to line up. Uh, big tall kid. 
Plainfield has, uh, has uh, scored a lot of runs in, in a number of the games they've played. Uh, they, um, they've scored, they scored 19 against Turtelot. They scored 13 against Putnam, uh, 9 against Wyndham. So they can, they've got a uh, little offense. Mike Bates leans in, and the uh, first pitch from Molesky is outside and bounces back to the backstop. One ball, no strikes. Bryce can bring some heat. He can bring a little bit of, he's got a good fastball. Uh, and, uh, and Bates, like I said, pretty tall kid, maybe about 6'2 or so. That ball in the dirt as well, scooped by Stephen Murphy. Two balls, no strikes. The uh, Panthers very vocal over there in the, in the dugout. They're uh, really chanting the name. Cheering their kids on. Here's the pitch from Molesky, straight down the middle. The heater, strike one. Two balls, one strike to the third baseman. Bates, wearing number nine. Still has the uniform pretty clean, but I got a feeling that it's going to be pretty dirty by the time this game is over. That ball is outside and off of Murphy's mitt. Murphy seems to be having a hard time moving to the to the right a little bit. Well, it's, it's muddy back there now, Mike, and it's going to get a lot worse, unfortunately. Nice pitch by... Uh, right at the knees. Beautiful yeah. pitch. Fastball from the last Outside game. corner. Bryce, so, uh, so what kind of count is that? Hit the spot. I think it's I think it's full. Three and two. I believe. <laughs> that's a full count. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. There's a pop up in the infield, and uh, <laughs> Stramiska was calling for it and uh, almost ice cream coned it, but still uh, pulled it down for out number one. It was a high pop up off the bat of Mike Bates. A little bit tentative on that uh, on that catch, but Jared pulled it in. Jack Goble, the right fielder. Jack's Knocking the dirt around in the, the box a little bit. Senior uh, baseball player for the Panthers. Squares the bunt and uh, Molesky. Uh, Bryce outside. has several outside pitches so far, and I can't help but think that some of it has to do with the footing on the mound, Mike. Um, it's just not going to be not going to be easy out there. Like I said, it's going to get worse. I think as the afternoon goes on. Two and zero. Oh. Murphy's it's had a goal. little trouble with that outside pitch. He's not. Yeah. Uh, he had several. So I said away. it. So I said mm. a minute ago. Yeah. Whether whether he's not moving out or whether he's being fooled by what Bryce is throwing, I'm not sure. There's a strike from Molesky. Bryce definitely, definitely uh, hitting that outside corner or just just beyond the outside corner. A lot of strikes out there, some balls out there already. There's the tenth pitch of the inning from Molesky. That's a strike right down the middle. Goble looking right at it. He shook his head. Yep, 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 like he knew. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the first. No score. Grizzle versus Plainfield. We are here in Plainfield. Outside and low. You know, it looks like Murphy got that one on the inside shin a little bit. What do you think that count is, Mike? That's a full count. Is it 3-2? Three 3-2. Two? Three and two. <laughs> if you're wondering what we're guffawing about, is uh, a couple of times this year I've called 3-0 counts, full counts, because and, I wasn't paying attention, and, basically. And lo and behold, uh, in two more <laughs> pitches, it was a full count. And uh, it's like, why would we even bother naming the count? Just say it's 3-2, and two, and that'll be there eventually. I prophesized it. You do. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the first. And here's the offering from Molesky. And that ball is in the dirt, ball four. I think you're right, Merch. A little bit of control problems, you know, has got to do with the conditions. Uh, Murphy having a hard time, uh, you know, handling the ball. And it looks like uh, he hurt his leg a little bit as well. And it's just cold out there. It was um... Isaiah Thompson. I say yesterday uh, Second at, baseman. at the softball game, it was just miserably cold. And uh, I forgot it was the fifth or sixth inning. Casey Hurst, the pitcher for the for the Panthers, um, came out with an injury. Hurt her shoulder. And, yeah, and we weren't sure if it was an injury from pitching or or just tightening up because of, because of the weather. But uh, she, was, she was in some pain yesterday afternoon. <clears throat> the first pitch to Thompson in, uh, is a strike. Uh, from Molesky. Now, getting back to uh, the pitcher yesterday, Casey Hurst, I actually talked to her dad yesterday, <laughs> and uh, she's fine. She's going to ice it up and oh, everything, good. but she's not used to, I guess, he, he said he, she's not used to throwing in those types of conditions, so it was a rough day for her. Oh! That ball gets away. That ball was a curveball outside, goes all the way back to the backstop, and uh, the runner goes down to second base on a wild pitch. Hey, 
Zia Thompson uh, playing second base today as a junior for the Panthers. Uh, very good hitter. Plainfield's got a lot of big kids. Yeah. Growing big out here on the farm. <laughs> Here's the pitch from Molesky. That's a strike. One ball, two strikes. Here in the bottom of the first. Jack Goble, second base right now. After that uh, wild pitch. Foul ball out of play, just behind us. I'm waiting for one to uh, land right on the easy up and Coll- collapse the whole thing. Yeah, right, just explode. right on top of us. I could see that. Yeah, happen. I got this thing at a yard sale. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> There's a bouncer into the uh, to the uh, third base's coach box, but the coach just uh, left his hand in his pocket and said, "Okay, there you go." Right by him. I was going to say at a yard sale. By looking at it, I think you got screwed. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Molesky, and it's outside and right through the wickets of Stephen Murphy, and uh, Goble's going to go down to third. So a couple of wild pitches, or I don't think I'm Yeah, I, I almost call that one a pass, pass ball, ball because, yeah. uh, you know, catchers have to stop some of those in the dirt, and, um, and, and Murphy went right through his legs. So the pass ball and the wild pitch have not helped uh, the the battery mates uh, here so far in the bottom of the first. No. Uh, playing field. The has gone from right. a walk to second, then all the way to third, both on uh, errant pitches or catches. And already uh, I see Bryce Molesky throwing a lot of pitches here in the first inning. And, and with the new pitching rules, uh, as far as how many pitches you can, not how many you can throw, but based upon how many you, th- you throw, you have to rest. And... Um, you know, you want to be as efficient as possible on the mound. And, and Bryce is having a tough first inning here, uh, yeah. along with Stephen Murphy having a tough first inning behind the plate. And rain. it's starting to rain, Mike. Rain coming down again. Two and two, and there's a pop-up out of play. And that's going to be on the easy up. No? <laughs> it hit somebody's vehicle. Was that mine? Did it hit mine? Uh, <laughs> the pitch. There's a bouncer to short, and uh, the runner is just fur, just uh, just safe at first base as he runs it out as the ball was bobbled at short by uh, Max Gregory. Yeah, that was an error on Gregory. Uh, I think Glo- uh, Goble's going to score anyway, um, but uh, Max certainly should have had that that play at first base, and, and he just bobbled it. And once again. You know, once again, it's cold out there. Kids, yeah. the kids have their their right hand or a throwing hand. All of them have them in their pocket to try to keep it warm. Because yeah. once once that you know you pick up that ball and you try to throw, it's it's cold out there. Chris Peaky, the first baseman. Peasley. Peasley. Oh yeah, it doesn't. That's my fault. Peaky. See, it does look like Peaky. Yeah. Strike one to the first baseman. He's another tall kid. He's got to be six well, three, six four. Chris is one of the basketball stars this year. He, I think he came off the bench, but he scored a lot of points, and he also uh, was a football player. There's a bouncer to a Gregory six to four, and to uh, over to uh, first base to Stremeska for a six four three double play to end the inning. However, they did need that. They did need that to get out of the out of the first inning. It was nice to see. So. A little uh, good ball play in the field from the Wolverines to end the inning. So after one, the Panthers do get one run after Goble walks and uh, comes around to score on uh, a wild pitch and a pass ball and a bouncy to short. So after one, score. Panthers one, Griswold nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today at 860-376-0611. 
And welcome back to Grizzled, uh, I'm sorry, Plainfield High School. Uh, we are on the road today as the Grizzled Wolverines taking on the Plainfield Panthers. We're just getting ready to start the top of the second inning. The rain's coming down again, Merch. Yeah, uh, we just can't uh, can't get a break here. It, it, it was raining when we got here. It seemed to stop and clear up a little bit. Back to raining, but through the rain or not, it is cold. It's cold out here. Kids are, kids are having a little trouble out there fielding the ball, uh, keeping their hands warm in order to throw the ball. And uh, if it stays like this all day, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a you know, rough game to play. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Uh, yesterday was just misty and just cruddy. Yeah, Yesterday yeah. Yesterday was that. This is, you know, we got a little bit of a steady downpour, you know, steady rainfall, you know, stops and starts, starts. What do you think is a harder game to play? Because uh, it's different. Yeah, it is different. But, but you know, the bottom line is it's wet. It's just wet. It's cold. It's raw. It's miserable. Yeah. Um, I, I think probably here, I, 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 you know, when it's a little bit more rain, even yeah. even, even uh, blocks your vision a little bit more. Yesterday was just kind of a dreary, misty day for the softball game. But uh, it, it's... It's raining right now. It's just raining. Here's Tremiska to uh, lead off the top of the second inning with the wooden bat. The only one on the lineup that uses a wooden bat. The only one in probably any lineup that uses a wooden bat. I used a wooden bat all through school. Michael, that was a couple years ago. That was uh, two, three years well, ago. Well, no decades. <laughs> Jared's decades. batting 346, 9 for 26. And as we said in the first inning, they have nine players batting over 300. Here's a uh, pop-up to... Uh, the shortstop, and uh, he brings it down, looking up into the rain for out number one. It's Dalton Smith uh, corralling that that pop up. Brendan Doyle, the right fielder, his first time up today. Brendan is uh, six for eighteen, batting three thirty three coming in today's game. Here's a pitch from uh, DeRozier. Little curve Ooh. inside, just missed. I just have to say that looked good. I don't know if it that did look the, good from this side. Yeah, the umpire too, but that that cur curled right around and looked like it was a perfect strike. But that's why we're here, and he's there. Yeah. Oh boy, that was high and outside. I think that was a payback right there. I think that was uh, the receipt. That was high. The and other outside. one, yeah. One ball, one strike to uh, the right fielder for Grizzled High School. And DeRozier from the full windup. And the pitch. Snothers curveball. That one in the dirt. Two balls, one strike to Doyle, the grizzled right fielder today. Ben Leach doing a good job behind the plate. Has stopped a couple of uh, balls in the dirt. Stephen Murphy having a little trouble for Griswold so far, but I think he'll pick that up. There's a shot to uh, right center field. And uh, the Jack, Jack Gobo. Makes a nice catch in right field. Yeah, Goble just takes a couple of steps to his right, makes the catch. Good solid hit from uh, yeah, Brendan that, Doyle. Yeah, that, uh, that was a good hit. Uh, along with Bryce Molesky's single in the first inning, those were probably two balls hit hardest so far this afternoon. Zach Longill, the left fielder. And he backs out a little bit, uh, but... Uh, Ump says it caught the inside corner, so strike one. The ball's one strike. Two outs here in the top of the second. Ooh. He reaches for that one, but uh, sends that one out to right field as well. But Goble right there to make the line drive catch to end the inning. So three up, three down for the Wolverines so far today. We're going to go to the bottom of the second. Plainfield leads... Grizzled one to nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball right here on Wolverine Radio. Hey there, this is Pastor Josh from Quinnebog River Church inviting you to join me right here on Wolverine Radio every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for the River Church Radio Hour. It's an hour of contemporary Christian music and biblical thought. I'm the biblical thought part of it, and some amazing Christian musicians provide the music, and it's a great time together on air here on Wolverine Radio. Of course, you can always find us live in the Grizzled Middle School Auditorium every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or anytime online at gotoriverchurch.org. And we're back here at Plainfield High School. Mike Monarski, Kevin Merchant, uh, and uh, of course, you know, we are under an easy up. So with the rain coming down, you know, we are selling tickets 
to uh, get underneath the easy up. So, of course, one of the Grizzle players' mom said, well, I'm going to come down here, too. Yes, we do take a check. Okay. All right, so. We, we would also take donuts, um, <laughs> egg McMuffins, yeah. anything that, uh, that sure. is, has, uh, is of value. We Everything would, bagels accept. with cream cheese, with toasted cheese. dark. Okay. Sure. Sounds good. I think I was complete enough when I said what that was. Because <laughs> I'm really thinking of an everything bagel toasted dark with cream cheese. <laughs> you might get one. Somebody's going to bring one down, Michael. Somebody's going to bring one down. Oh. Wait, what was that? Everything bagel toasted dark. Toasted dark? I've never heard of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta blacken that thing. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got that from my mother. My mother, like burnt stuff, you know, like just like a little singed burnt, you know, whatever, man. Oh, I burn stuff too, but not, but not on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah, on purpose. I'm... The two oh. best things I make is um, call for take or reservation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. It's true, though. That's a good line. <laughs> with Matt DeRoja at the plate, the uh, playing field pitcher with a uh, 2-0 and o count. Christina, that was funny. It really was. Just so you know, that was Christina Gregory. With a G. Gregory. Max's mom. Go ahead. <laughs> you should do that. 3-1 count on uh, Matt DeRosia after uh, a strike and a, and a third ball. And yeah, the rain's really coming down right now. Ooh, there's a there's line a... shot. That's in the gap. A little bit. It's going to be a long single. Look at me see that through the raindrops for crying out loud. Another good solid hit by Matt DeRoge. He's a, he's a lefty um, hitter, and he took that uh, Molesky pitch for a nice line drive to right center. I wonder if Christina really heard what I said about uh, a, uh, a uh, bagel toasted dark uh, everything bagel with cream I, I, cheese. I don't know. Uh, she might have missed a little of that, but I, I, I don't know. She, I saw her writing something down. <laughs> Batter's Alex DeAngelis, the DH, who lays a bunt down the first baseline. Molesky picks it up, shovels it over to uh, to Stramiska, and uh, picture perfect. Grizzle uh, has their first out. sacrifice. Yeah, right there. very nice sacrifice by DeAngelis. Good job. He had one job, and he did it well. So now we have one out. Runner on second. Batter is Keegan Marku, the left fielder. Another big kid. And another uh, really good football player. Keegan uh, was a running back, and he's a strong kid. Nice pitch he's a from uh, Molesky kid. for uh, a swinging strike. Plainfield leads one to nothing. Here we are in the top of in, in the bottom of the second inning. Runner on second. There's uh, one out and zero uh, and one the count. That uh, was inside as uh, Marku had to spin out a little bit. One ball, one strike. And the rain seems like it's slowing up again. Here's the stretch from Molesky. That's a strike. One ball, two strikes. It seems like uh, Molesky is getting a little bit more into a groove as far as his control a is concerned. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely throwing more strikes this inning. Here's the pitch from the stretch. Strike three. He got him looking. That's two down. That was a nice pitch. He totally had him, uh, and he knew it too. He just I, yeah, I think I think Keegan was a little bit fooled on that one. Uh, I, I think he was expecting a fastball, and and got got fooled by the curve. But Molesky threw a nice pitch there to uh, catch Keegan looking. Ben Leach, the catcher, steps into the plate. Two outs, runner on second. Molesky still pitching from the stretch. And there's a uh, bouncer that Molesky backhands at the mound, throws it over to Stramiska to end the inning. So Wolverines, even though uh, they got the, well, Plainfield got, gets one runner on the bases, but Grizzled erases it. So no threat from the Panthers. We're going to go to the top of the third inning here in a uh, windy, rainy, wet kind of game here at Plainfield High School. Plainfield leads 1-0. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio.
most wonderful time of the year. And the Burns Agency is wishing all of our loyal customers a happy and healthy holiday season. If you haven't already, add calling the Burns Agency to your list of resolutions. Start 2017 off of the savings and let us help you revisit your insurance needs, showing you what quality coverage and unbeatable prices can do for you in 2017. Happy holidays from the Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Mike Minarski and uh, the Merch, Kevin Merchant, uh, here at uh, Plainfield High School, just about ready to start the third inning. Uh, DeRocher throwing his wind up, his uh, uh, warm ups from the mound. And what do you, what's your synopsis of the game so far, there, Kevin? Well, the uh, the Panthers score in the first inning without a hit, uh, a, pa- uh, a walk, and a couple of uh, pass ball and a wild pitch, and then a uh, an error. So the uh, Panthers lead one and nothing with no hits. Each team has had one hit so far. Each team has one one strikeout. Um, and it, I, you know the synopsis comes down to the we- you know, some of it's the weather. It's just it's just not uh, a fun day to play, and and everything out there is wet. You know everybody's uh, shoes are wet. Every every time you pick up a ball, it's wet, and uh, your footing isn't there. And, and everybody just tries to try to do the best what they have. And I know the coaches really wanted to p- get this game in. Uh, it, it was raining pretty good before the game. Basically, the athletic director of Plainfield said it's up to the coaches, and they both want to play. So they hate to they hate to reschedule. You know, you have a game unless it's the field is completely unplayable. They just need to get the game in because rescheduling is is always a nightmare. Um, well, they haven't really thought of it. They haven't really done any treatment to the field in between innings yet, so they can't be too concerned with it yet. Well, the good thing is they they did have a tarp over the mound and, and over the the batting circle, so that was that was good. That that kept some of that rain off, but uh, it's been raining off and on ever since. So, there's the first pitch uh, to Alan Rondo, who uh, skies went out to center field. And uh, easy play for the Panthers. One down, one pitch, one out. I tell you, Michael, when that took off, you know, yeah. I thought it was uh, headed on to Route 12. Yeah. All right, back to the top of the the the, the order. Here's uh, Max Gregory, which could also have something to do with the weather. You know, you get mm-hmm. get it up there in this this rainy, misty weather, and it just doesn't travel as well. Yeah. Max playing shortstop today since uh, Molesky is on the hill. There's a uh, curveball from DeRozier in the dirt. Gregory, One ball, no strikes. Gregory grounded out to short his first time up this afternoon. First pitch hitting. That's correct. DeRozier, pretty solid through the uh, first couple innings, uh, working very efficiently. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, he's he's not thrown uh, not thrown a lot of pitches uh, no. here. Mm. Mechanically, very stable. Here's the wind and a uh, foul ball out to the right-hand side and out of play. Two balls, one strikes. Max looks down to uh, uh, Coach Chip Rourke for the sign. And here's the pitch, and there's a shot. Right knocks the pitcher down. Max is hustling down the line, but he gets the ball over to first base for the out. The that was bang, a, bang play. That was a real nice play by DeRozier. First of all, I think he was protecting himself because the ball would, 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 was coming back at his head, and he kind of yeah. bent down, put up his glove, knocked the ball down, but had the wherewithal to uh, run it down and, and really make a nice play on Max Gregory, who who can fly on the first baseline. So we uh, had to make a good play to, to make that out. Two down for the Wolverines. Here comes the pitcher, Bryce Molesky, up to the plate. Uh, had a base hit his first time up. He's got the only, the only hit for the yeah. Wolverines. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, a nice, uh, nice base hit to, uh, to left center. Here's the pitch from DeRozier. Strike one. And DeRoche has a nice compact delivery, very consistent. Here's a fly ball into short left field to the opposite field for Molesky. 
and uh, the Panthers pull it down. So another quick inning, three up, three down for uh, the Wolverines. We go to the bottom of the third. Panthers one, Griswold nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. Eastern Savings Bank has a home loan that's right for you. Let one of our experienced lending professionals help you find the loan that best fits your needs. For more information, visit our lending center at eastern-savings.com. Stop by any of our convenient branches or call 860-889-7381 to schedule an appointment. Eastern Savings Bank. Local lenders, local decisions, with offices in Norwich, Jewett City, and Plainfield. Eastern Savings Bank. Because it matters. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Welcome back to Plainfield High School. Mike Monarski and Kevin Merchant along with you on this uh, wet and just damp Saturday afternoon. Uh, the rain comes, the rain goes, but uh, we're playing ball. I'm comparing to yesterday, Michael, a little bit. We were talking about the misty, raw, lousy game yesterday compared to the rainy, raw, lousy game today. And the only thing about yesterday, I have to mention, that we were under the easy up yesterday. We, we, we had a little trouble because we did not have power uh, anywhere within about 150 feet of the field. So we were way behind home plate and uh, a little tough to, to call that, but I, I think we did okay. But it was funny, with yesterday of the mist, I don't know if it was a little bit more windy, but no matter where we were under the easy up, we got wet. It, it was just misting in on us, whereas today it's a little bit different because the rain's coming down, you know, a little bit more straight and direct, and we're staying a little bit drier. A little bit today, yeah. Not not warm, but dry. Because <laughs> I am freezing right now. Well, it was funny. You know, I left I left um, my house today, and it was you know, it was kind of overcast out. I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe this is just the way it's going to be today. I'm not kidding you. I got halfway up uh, out of the driveway, and the rain started to come down. Yeah, I uh, I walked out my my back door coming to the game, and I had I had gone out 15 minutes before that to the car, and it was fine. I walked out good uh, stuff into my car for the game and yeah. I said uh oh it's starting to sprinkle mm-hmm. uh, they'll get this in they'll get it in but it's but it's just not going to be the conditions are going to be uh, pretty pretty lousy for the whole game I think all right here we go for the bottom of the third and that's uh, Brendan Ogden the center fielder leading off for the Panthers and he bunts it right back to Molesky and he's going to throw it over to Stramiska one to three on the put out one down already for the Panthers. I think that's a good idea. Uh, just get some base runners, but uh, that that bunt by Brendan was was too too much back to Molesky. Brendan's another another kid for uh, Plainfield. As 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 for Griswold, is another football player. A lot of uh, a lot of athletes in small schools they they play two three sports, um, and and usually they're they're uh, they're very good at all of them. Yeah, both schools have really good programs. There's a pop-up behind the plate. Murphy giving chase and uh, couldn't get it. I mean, Jan Voland, uh, you know, she's been at Plainfield for, for quite a few years now. Uh, does a really good job. you got Steve Cravino and Griswold, who's been there, what, about two or three? Maybe three years now? This is his third year at yeah, Griswold High School. That. You know, so. And the nice thing is, is both of them really, they care. They care about the kids and they care about the program. Especially, especially the two, the, the the coaches. The coaches are really no balls, one strike. Did he offer? Well, he went halfway. I'm s- okay. And first base ump says new. One ball, one strike. I think I would have said that too, but um, but it was uh, worth checking with the first base ump. One yep. ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Low ball two. Two and one. I'm not sure we mentioned it, but it's Mike uh, Mike Bates is at the, at the plate right now. He's the uh, Plainfield third baseman who popped out to first base his first time up. Dribbles one right behind the plate. Murphy uh, picks it up. Ball's foul. One and two. Bates is uh, probably about, uh, about six one, and he's almost one of the smaller guys. Goble's probably the smallest on the team, and he's not really that small of a kid. You're right, though. They they, they grow them uh, they grow them big on the farm, as you said, Merch. <laughs> Good athletes too. Curveball down low. It's a full count. But you knew that. I knew that three pitches ago. 
You just start wearing a turban. <laughs> About Karnak. Karnak. There's a bouncer uh, to the right. Long throw from Gregory, but he gets him. Nice throw from Max Gregory. Good play. Yeah, nice play by Max. And especially especially with the, with the ground and grass wet, of course, yeah. it slows that ball up. And, you know, normally where the ball would get to you a lot faster and you don't normally charge it, in, in weather conditions like this, you have to, you know, you have to have a, make a conscious effort. you got to come towards the ball a little bit more or else you'll never, never, get, that, uh, never get that runner first. Here's Jack Goble, the uh the right fielder. Jack uh, scored the only run today with a walk and a moving around bases on a wild pitch and a and a, um, and a pass ball. And also has made a couple of really nice plays uh, in right field. In right field, yeah. yeah it's uh, not easy out there today with with the the rain and a little bit of wind that they have. Goebel squares to bunt on the first pitch for ball one, and the second pitch was outside and low, two and zero. Oh. Goebel ahead on the count. Molesky seems to have, uh, like I said, you know, last inning kind of shored up a little bit. And was right down the middle. I think Jack was taking that one all the way. Uh, I think he's still going to take. Yeah. I, Bryce is throwing quite he's a few taking pitches. this one, watch. I'm sure he is, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> that's a uh, fly to the uh, right fielder here in Griswold. And now uh, that is out number three. So, so actually, it's a... Uh, Kind of a fast-moving ball game. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we love our job. Yeah. Well, it's not the job. <laughs> it, it, it's these weather conditions you you subject us I to know. every every game. <sighs> I know. Top of the fourth coming up. <laughs> I had nothing to say. Top of the fourth coming up. Uh, one nothing Panthers. Listening to Wolverine baseball on Wolverine Radio. Thinking about buying or building a home? At Jewett City Savings Bank, we have mortgage programs to help you finance the home of your dreams. This is Kevin Merchant, President and CEO of Jewett City Savings Bank. And I want to tell you that as your neighborhood bank, Jewett City Savings Bank is dedicated to help you achieve your home ownership goals. That's why we offer a full range of fixed and adjustable rate mortgage programs in a variety of terms to meet almost any need and to fit within your budget. If you're thinking about building your own home, we offer land and construction loans to put your plans into action. In fact, with our all-in-one construction loan, you can finance the purchase of the land and the construction of your home in one smart program, saving you both time and money. Whatever your home borrowing needs, you can count on our team of helpful home financing experts to be there to guide you and assist you every step of the way, just like you'd expect a neighbor to do. Let us help you get started. Call us at 860-376-4444, stop by your nearest branch, or visit us at JCS Bank. Bank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And welcome back to Plainfield High School. Griswold and Plainfield playing ball today in, uh, uh, in, a, in a pool of water, pretty much. Yeah, less than ideal conditions, I would say. And you know, why not? Why not? What a better way to play ball on Earth Day. <laughs> That's right. It you is know? Earth Day. I heard that this morning. Yeah. Yep. We are celebrating the Earth. Did you know today was also the day that they hired Barbara Walters to sit next to, do you remember who? For ABC News, Harry Reasoner. I was going to say Harry Reasoner, and I said, oh, mm-hmm. if I'm wrong, then I'll look like a, a moron. And today is also the uh, the uh, birthday of the man who founded the atom bomb. How do you like that? Mr. Adam? Yeah, well. <laughs> I think his name was McMillan or something. Oh, jeez. And his wife, you know, uh, McMillan and wife. <laughs> oh, boy. Is it McMillan? Is it right? I don't know. Stephen Murphy's at the plate, the uh, grizzled catcher with a... Uh, with a one and one count. What did uh, Stephen so popped out to the pitcher's first time up? So uh, Grizzly Murphy, zero for one today. <laughs> he does look like Grizzly Murphy, doesn't he? He does. Wasn't he the uh, Wasn't he the star of the the, the last game or a, a game or two ago? I don't think we did that game, but he uh, had a walk off uh, walk off yeah. hit. Yeah. Winning run. Oh, against Lyman, maybe. Maybe it was Lyman. Wait a minute, I don't know if they played. They haven't played Lyman yet. No, never mind, somebody. It was a foul ball out of play, two balls, two strikes. That ball's got to be hard to handle. I don't even know how uh, DeRozier is doing it, never mind Molesky. I don't know how they're handling the ball. Looking back here, it might have been New London that they won 5-4. 5-4, to four. Five to four. it was a, Murphy, a yeah. Walk off, uh, walk-off hit to win that game. Here's the pitch from DeRozier. 
curveball that didn't really curve, but stayed high. And, uh, full count, three and two. Griswold with uh, only one hit. Bryce Molesky in the first inning had a base hit. Um, so Matt DeRozier is really keeping him in check here this afternoon. There's a pop-up in the infield. Third baseman uh, is calling it. Eight. And he's having a hard time, and you know, kind of navigating through the raindrops, but still made the catch. Well, just looking up and, and having yeah. that rain coming down in your face. Um, plus the, the wind, I think there's a little bit of wind... Although I could be lying because I don't see any trees moving, but fields under here there's a wind, Michael. Yeah, I saw your. Uh, there is a little oh, bit of see? wind. Yeah. See, it goes easy up. Make it slow. Yep. Oh boy. One out here in the top of the fourth. Plainfield leads one to nothing. Uh, Matt DeRozier pitching a very good ball game for the Plainfield Panthers. Molesky not not doing so bad himself. No. He had a rough inning or so with his con- with control, but he seemed to settle in. Each team only has one hit. Yeah. Uh, so the pitcher is certainly on our fault here. There's another. Uh, this could be trouble. This could, this be. could be trouble. And uh, he, oh, shortstop picks it off again. Two down. Nice play. He stuck with the ball. Yeah. It was Nate Tedeschi. Uh, Popped out to uh, Dalton Smith, the shortstop for Plainfield. And again, there, it's not easy uh, this afternoon with, with these raindrops falling in your face and wind blowing a little bit. Yeah, it's really coming down pretty good right now. It is. Probably the um, hardest of the, the yeah, entire game so far. I think you're right, Mike. And I just really hope they can get this game in. And uh, here's a Gilo stepping into the plate. Kind of spins out of the way as the ball was a little bit inside. It's uh, one ball, no strikes to Nick Gilo. Here's the pitch from DeRozier, and that's going to be a shot down the third base line, but falling out of play. Just ahead of that. Just ahead of it. One ball, one strike, two outs. Here in the top of the fourth inning, one nothing Plainfield. Griswold on a five-game winning streak. 4-0 in the ECC. Gilo pops one up to left field. And again, fighting the raindrops, but they're going to pull it down. That's going to do it uh, in the uh, top of the fourth. We're going to the bottom of the fourth right now. And uh, Plainfield leads Griswold. Ford to me, that one to nothing right here. It's Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today at 860-376-0611. Mike Monarski, Kevin Merchant here at Plainfield High School. Uh, we are right in the middle of a very wet, a wet and rainy game. Um, but it's only one to nothing, and you'd be very surprised to see that uh, in this game that uh, uh, there haven't been as many miscues as you think there would be. It's ba- actually pretty well played between both teams. And uh, I thought you were going to pick me up there, Merch. <laughs> yeah, and I, and, I, and I was. I was. It, 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 yeah, I, I mean, defensively, they've, they've played well uh, at, at the plate. I think each team only has one hit, so the pitchers have been playing well. Uh, I've been pitching well, and, um, and not a lot of base runners. The game's moving, moving along fast, but, you know, it's, it's tough to play under these conditions. And, well, you know uh, what's not yeah. moving along fast is the weather front that's coming through. Oh, we just no. saw some radar, and you're, you're going to be looking at it right now. And it's uh, right on top of us. Yeah. But after that passes, it seems like it's okay. And you can see you can see the shine starting on the field out there, meaning that it's getting wet. Uh, the umpire is standing in a in a in a pretty shiny spot right now, yeah. and, and back up between third and short, and between second and first <laughs> also. Here's uh, the beginning of the bottom of the fourth, and uh, up uh, is number ten, Isaiah Thompson, the second baseman. Jack Goble from the uh, from Plainfield team uh, got some 
interesting facts for me together because they were very excited about Wolverine carrying this uh-huh. carrying this game today. And a bun- we're glad about to a, do it. About a bunch of the kids and uh, Isaiah Thompson. Um, some of his likes. He likes the Yankees. He's a big Mike Trout and Bryce Harper fan. Loves Chinese food and uh, loves playing football. <coughs> He's a junior. And the junior just knocks one out of play. One ball, two strikes. He's probably one of the biggest second basemen I've ever seen. He's, he's a big kid. He's broad-shouldered. You know, this, uh, Plainfield team has a lot of strong, strong kids. Yeah. Again, you know, they're, they're football players, so they, they lift weights a lot. And There's a bounce at a third. That's going to be a nice glove by Gilo, but the, the ball is uh, just west of the bag for a foul ball. Well, it seems like the rain's slowing up again. That's west? Is that west? Yeah, to the left would be west. Oh. Oh. Not geographically speaking, necessarily. No, just yeah, no, just no, no, to no. the left. Yeah, so the, anything to the right of the bag would be east. East. And anything beyond the bag is north. There's <laughs> a bouncer to uh, the shortstop. Max Gregory throws it over to Stramiska, 6-3 on the putout. Why can't I be? Oh no, you can. Just a, you can. Just a little bit. And there is a line you know, there. That that north south line is right right I, I, there. Yeah, it's the equator. Yes. No, that would be east west. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Mason Dixon line. Yeah. No. I try to be a little creative, and oh, yeah, yeah, kick me in the butt. Creative. Oh, Chris Peasley is at the at the plate, and I, he centers right back on the ball game. <laughs> Chris Peasley is a junior. Like country music, and he just grounds out of the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that's one to three. He's out. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I'm trying to be a country singer. We'll you know, talk about sense. talk about Chris next time. Look. It's like he got a, he got jammed on that pitch a little bit too, and it just bounced right in front of home plate, and really couldn't. So now, Molesky's uh, got a couple of quick outs, and uh, the pitcher Matt DeRozier. Matt DeRozier, right? another junior. Celtic fan. One of his favorite sayings is, uh, height does not measure heart. And pitching a fine ball game. He is pitching a great game. Here's the pitch and fouled uh, straight on back. One ball, one strike. Right-handed thrower, pitcher on the mound, but a left-handed batter, which is not terribly uncommon. Here's the pitch for Molesky. That's, that's to the east. It is east. Way, <laughs> way east. Wait, is it is it southeast? Kind of southeast? Uh, yeah, it's kind of, southeast. yeah. Yep. Handball two strikes. Molesky pitching from the full windup, and here it is. That's high and outside. West of the equator. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes to uh, the pitcher. That's uh, in the dirt. He uh, had to jump out of the way. Murphy actually made a nice stop on that pitch. And it's not its not getting any easier back there. It's wet and slippery and getting muddy. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. A little pitcher versus pitcher. Plainfield, uh, Plainfield dugouts have been a little bit more vocal over there than, uh, than the Grizzle one there. Haven't heard much from the Grizzle no, dugout. No, not much at all. And uh, Plainfield kids are really, uh, usually really out there supporting some, their teammates. Usually you hear some chatter from Grizzle, but uh, not much today. Three and two, here's the pitch. And there is a shot base into hit. right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit for Matt DeRozier. It's only a second hit of the game for the Wolverines. Um, for off, the, off, the, off, the Panthers. Uh, Panthers. Off Bryce Molesky. Catch it. You did catch me. Catch me in there. <laughs> so in almost uh, four full innings of play, that's that's only the third hit of the game. Two for Plainfield and one for Griswold. With Advance Auto Parts in-store pickup service, you can buy any part online and pick it up in-store in just 30 minutes. It's this fast. Buy your parts online and pick it up in-store in just 30 minutes. No, faster. Buy your parts online and pick it up in just 30 minutes. 
By personal business of minutes. By personal business. <sighs> Nailed it. Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. Visit advanceautoparts.com for more details. By Murphy, or did Stramiska was, not, yeah, not make the play? I, I, I believe that was an errant throw by Murphy because um, Stramiska tried to backhand it on a hop, and it just went right in, skirted right into right field. And there's a pop up, and that's going to be into center field. And uh, ooh, little trouble, little trouble. And, and he, dropped, he it. dropped the ball, lost it in the rain. The rain's coming down fairly heavy right now. DeRozier will score, and the Panthers are up two to nothing. You could tell that uh, he was he was uh, moving to his right initially, and then and there's Nate Tedeschi out in, out in center field, and then all of a sudden started fading to his left, and you could tell that he was uh, he was losing track of that ball. Yeah, that that could not that was not an easy play, not an easy play at all, because the rain started coming down heavier even then. Yeah, they have Keegan Marcou at the plate. It's a bouncer to Stramiska. He's going to take it unassisted to first base to end the fourth inning. And uh, as the uh, fourth inning comes to a close, the umpire just said, hey, how about a little bit of cleanup? So I think they're going to do some work to the, the mound uh, and uh, the home plate area. Believe it or not, Michael, it seems like it's getting brighter. It seems like yeah. whether, whether this lane, this rain is moving out or, um, uh, or not, but it's behind us, which would be south of us. Um, Correct. Yeah, it's actually, it does brighter. seem like all of a sudden it does start seem like it's getting brighter. And one thing you don't want to see is you don't want to see a five game winning streak go away on a range shortened affair. No, you know you certainly don't. No. So we're going to take. Oh, go ahead. No, but but you have to come out here and you, you know have to play every game. It's it's uh, regardless of weather conditions, you have to come out here and and because both teams are under the same conditions, so you just have to come out and play hard and doing some work at the home plate right now with some speedy dry or something to try to soak up some of that water. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to go to the top of the fifth inning. The uh, Wolverines are coming to bat, and uh, Plainfield leads 2 to nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. Know your limit. Don't drink and drive. But if you do drink, drink responsibly. Take a tip and alternate alcoholic drinks with water or non-alcoholic beverages. Pace yourself. Keep track of how many drinks you've had. Eat before you drink. Choose a drink containing lower alcohol concentration and don't have more than one drink per hour. The standard drink size is 12 ounces for beer, 5 ounces for wine, and 1 ounce for liquor. For a handy Know Your Limit drinks versus weight chart, go to PutnamPride.org. Town & Country Discount Oil is a family-owned company providing reliable and dependable service since 1996. Town & Country is licensed and insured with top-notch customer service and a well-trained staff servicing your residential and commercial needs. Town & Country strives to get you everyday low prices year-round. So call them, 860-376-6008, or check them out on the web at Town & Country Discount Oil LLC.com. Town & Country Discount Oil, delivering sales. Savings you'll warm up to. Don't just wish for a winning deal. Make it dish. It will make it real. Don't just wish. Make it dish. Hey everyone, this is Ellis Dish from Dish Motors. We're back better than ever with our new sales and service center on Route 32 in North Franklin. Everyone says there's nothing better than dealing with the dishes, and here's why. Selection. We have the area's largest inventory of off-lease, one-owner vehicles of all makes and models. You name it, we got it, or I'll get it for you at no additional charge. Quality. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous 120-point safety and quality check. Nothing leaves the lot without my personal approval. Convenience. We have financing sources for almost any situation. We offer on-site registration processing, and we have maintenance programs for years of stress-free owner and now open for all your maintenance needs, our full-service repair facility, where oil changes start at just $19.99. Call today for your appointment or just stop by. So save thousands and deal with the dishes. Route 32, North Franklin. Online, thriftycarsct.com or ring us, 860-383-4750. Don't just wish, make it dish. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today. 
today at 860-376-0611. Hey there, this is Pastor Josh from Quinnebog River Church inviting you to join me right here on Wolverine Radio every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for the River Church Radio Hour. It's an hour of contemporary Christian music and biblical thought. I'm the biblical thought part of it, and some amazing Christian musicians provide the music, and it's a great time together on air here on Wolverine Radio. Of course, you can always find us live in the Grizzled Middle School Auditorium every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or anytime online at GoToRiverChurch.org. Goodbye, wonderful time of the year and the burns agency is wishing all of our loyal customers a happy and healthy holiday season if you haven't already add calling the burns agency to your list of resolutions start 2017 off with the savings and let us help you revisit your insurance needs showing you what quality coverage and unbeatable prices can do for you in 2017 happy holidays from the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 And we're back here at Plainfield High School uh, where it seems to be lightening up just a little bit, you know, in the sky. And But the rain has been coming and going and coming and going. And just as soon as uh, it slows down, it speeds back up again. But they're still playing baseball here. Yeah. Uh, trying, to, trying to do some work on the field uh, right now. Still out there with some... some uh, Speedy dry type material along with, with rakes and they're just trying to dry it up a little bit. It, it did get a little bit uh, slick this past inning. And they're doing their best to get this game in. And it is lightening up. It's certainly brightening up. Not to say that the radar says that uh, it's going to stay like this, but one thing we haven't mentioned was the uh, the coaches uh, of the two teams. Uh, for the for the Griswold Wolverines, we have Chip Rourke in his eighth season um, this year, and uh, Chip's Chip's a good coach. Helps us out a lot. He's he's very supportive of of uh, the broadcasts. And on the other side, we have Jason Jason Chaveris in his sixth year at Plainfield, and. Um, Comes off a 2016 last year's record of 16 and nine, and six and four in the ECC medium. So two good, two good coaches. Uh, the kids look up to. And here is uh, the first pitch in the uh, top of the fifth from DeRozier uh, to Jared Stamiska, swing and a miss, strike one. Two Wolf- nothing here in the top of the fifth. Wolverine still uh, with only one hit this afternoon. Matt DeRozier is uh, really pitching a fine game. There's a fly ball in the infield to uh, second baseman. And he brings it down for out number one. And and Drozier seems to be handling the Grizzle batters. Yeah, pretty handily. Well. And you know, we, we mentioned at the top of the game that um, that Griswold has nine players, nine nine players batting over three hundred. And they're not helping their averages today, but uh, you know, they're they're running into a Good solid, good solid pitcher in Matt DeRozier. Here's uh, Brendan Doyle, the right fielder for Griswold, and the first pitch is bounced to the right side. Strike one, out of play. Brendan actually Jim DeRozier over to pick up the ball. Brendan flew out to uh, the right fielder Jack Goble back in the second inning. Chip work that is. Did I say Chip DeRozier? I just did, didn't I? Maybe that's Matt's. Father. That's the first mistake you've made all all oh, season. No. No, it's, that's the first mistake I've made in the last 60 seconds. <laughs> one and one. Well, we're going to have to get some, some base runners here. Oh, a little, little chatter from the from the Grizzle dugout for the first time, I think, this afternoon. Yeah. Swing and a mitt. Well, that was a uh, foul tip into the mitt of the playing field catcher. One ball, two strikes. You're right. That is the first time that yeah, we've heard any chatter they, from the Grizzle bench. They, they, yeah, again, whether it's uh, you know because they're they're not hitting as well today, but they uh, the there's, there's not a lot going on in there today. It seemed a little bit flat coming into today's game. High and outside from uh, DeRozier. Two balls, two strikes to Doyle, the uh, Wolverine right fielder. 
Grizzled only one hit so far today, and he just looked at strike three. Curveball on the outside corner. Really nice pitch by DeRozier on that. He, he certainly uh, he fooled Doyle on that one. Yeah, Doyle's just walking away. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. That's Matt DeRozier's second strikeout this afternoon. Again, only giving up one hit so far. Two down. And here's the pitch from DeRozier. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. You don't see that often. You have to tell them what has just oh happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zach Longhill just had a hit a shot right back to uh, DeRozier. And DeRozier just put out his glove, and there it was. That's that, the third out of the inning. That what, was a yeah, bang, bang play. Wasn't quite self-defense, but he had a, a terrific reaction to that. His uh, his hand-eye uh, coordination was, was pretty darn good and took everybody off guard when he, when he grabbed that one. All right, we're going to go to the uh, bottom of the fifth. Uh, uh, and, a, and a pretty good ball game, even though, you know, it's it's wet and damp out there. They're doing their best. So uh, Plainfield leads Grizzle 2 to nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. Sir. Brian. No, yeah. you guys are doing great. I mean. If it stays like this, we're good. Yeah, we're good, huh? We had to stop putting that stuff down right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it comes out hard again, we're probably going to have to stop. It it's, but it's an official game now, right? It is right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Town & Country Discount Oil is a family-owned company providing reliable and dependable service since 1996. Town & Country is licensed and insured with top-notch customer service and a well-trained staff servicing your residential and commercial needs. Town & Country strives to get you everyday low prices year-round. So call them, 860-376-6008, or check them out on the web at Town & Country Discount Oil LLC.com. Town & Country Discount Oil, delivering safe. You'll warm up to. Mike Monarski, Kevin Merchant, broadcasting live here at Plainfield High School. Uh, Plainfield versus Griswold uh, High School Baseball. 2 nothing. Plainfield leads. We just had the home plate umpire come over and tell us uh, that if it stays like this right now, uh, we're probably going to get the rest of the ball game in, even though we're going to the bottom of the fifth. But if it speeds up again, they're probably going to call it. Uh, right now, we have people in the uh, Wolver Radio, uh, Wolver Radar 3000, uh, looking for <laughs> the weather forecast. <laughs> Ben Leach at the plate for playing field. It's not he, Doppler, uh, it's sonar. Oh, my God. He's 0 for, 1, uh, 0 for 1 this afternoon. And and Ben Leach is a uh, is a senior who likes fishing, the Bruins, Boston Red Sox, Patriots. Um, and his favorite player is Salvador Perez. Salvador Perez. I'll tell you what, Ben's a, Ben's a, Ben's a big kid. Yeah, I've kind of been saying that all day. These kids are huge. Good athletes. They had a good football team last year. They did. How'd they do against Griswold? Oh, yeah. So, anyway, moving on. Um, three balls, one strike. <laughs> uh, it was not even close. That ball's out of play. Well, after 13 years of uh, 13 years of uh, being on the short end, the the uh, Patriot uh, Patriots Panthers finally had their way last year with Griswold. I think it was 28 to nothing. Yeah, 28 to nothing like that. Yeah, something like that. We're not going to dwell on it, but um, that yeah. was the score well, who's of counting? that Thanksgiving who's, Day game. Who's, yeah. who's counting, right? Who's counting? Yeah. Two and two count on Ben Leach. There's another falling out of play. Staying alive. Staying alive. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Staying alive. <laughs> you got to have a little bit of fun. Otherwise. Oh, and we do. We do. Right. We have fun north of here, south of here, east and west of here. <laughs> Are you mocking me, Mr. Mer no, no, but Ben Leach just drew a walk um, <laughs> off of Bryce Molesky, and he'll be uh, at first base. And when we have Brendan Ogden coming up to the plate. Number five. And uh, let's see. Brendan is a junior. He uh, obviously <laughs> likes playing football. And wouldn't you know, coincidentally, uh, he likes playing football and especially beating Griswold on Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's his note on my sheet. And well, is a big Tom Brady fan. You know, I went to Grizzle High School many years ago. 
it, and I'll tell you something. It, it, it's been a rivalry ever since, and you know, sometimes it gets heated. Sometimes it, you know, it's just it's just cool. But for the most part, it's a good, healthy. <laughs> Very healthy type there, of rivalry. There, there have been a, a couple of incidents over the years, oh, sure. uh, probably both sides, where you know it was a little bit over the top. And I'm not going to say I was not a part of any of that. Yeah, <laughs> ever. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't want to accuse you right out, right out, right like that. No. But you know, since you're admitting it, um, yeah. <laughs> Ogden yeah. actually uh, went for a a low pitch to uh, sacrifice, and uh, it ended up being a pass ball and Leach found his way to second base so we have a runner on second with no outs in the bottom of the fifth inning it's a, it's it's an official game now so uh you know the umps can call it pretty much at any time now if they see fit to because uh really you mentioned it last inning the the field is uh it's glistening it's uh you can see it being sh- <coughs> it's getting shiny Which usually means there's a lot more water on the field than needs than, to be. Than it looks, yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's start staying on the surface like that. There's a uh, bouncer to uh, Gregory over f- at short. Uh, brings it over to Rondo, who was uh, covering first base because first and third uh, were charging. I'll tell you what, uh, Max Gregory on that play was lucky because he kind of took his time and, and made a nonchalant throw at first base, and Brendan Ogden is very quick down the line, and that, that throw just beat him. Uh, a couple of a couple of playing field uh, players weren't even sure that that was the case, but it, I, I definitely think he was out. One ooh, down, ooh. and uh, that's a shot to right uh, to left field, and that's uh, going to get past the diving Alan Rondo, going to go pretty much to the fence. A run's going to score, and that's going to be a double uh, for the Panthers, and they go up three to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. That was Mike Bates uh, with the RBI double, driving in Ben Leach for the third run for playing field. That was a good solid hit to left field. Comes Jack Goebel. Jack uh, Goebel. Un- uniform is uh, no longer uh, white. Jack Goebel is senior. He's a Red Sox fan, Patriots fan, likes fishing. There was a bouncer to uh, Nick Gila who bobbled the ball but still picked up the ball and threw it over to Stramiska and just got Goebel on the ground out, 5 3. Two outs. Runner moves over to third. So you have two outs. Runner on third. Three nothing. Plainfield in the bottom of the fifth. What do you got here? Isaiah Thompson, who uh, is 0 for 2 this afternoon. And he sends one straight back. Strike one. Fouling out of play. Playing field with this extra run this inning uh, could be a nice cushion for him. The ball was a little up there, but uh, Blue he, called it for a strike. I, I have to say... He's in, calling the high strike. Yeah, he is calling a high strike. High strike. But, again, as long as he calls it both ways, everybody knows that. You yeah. learn. The ball's outside, but, one and two. You're I think, right, if, as long as he's consistent. Yeah, I know. think Bryce was, was testing him on that because the last one, a little high and outside, he called the strike, and Bryce threw it a little bit higher and outside and uh, did not call that one a strike. Oh, that ball's a swing and a miss, but the ball gets uh, all the way to the backstop uh, as uh, it goes right under the glove of Stephen Murphy. And uh, the runner comes in from third. So now uh, Plainfield has opened it up a little bit with some cushion. Four to nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. And they are not out of the inning because the pit, the, uh, the runner went down to first. So we still have two out, even though we got the strikeout. The ball uh, went back to the backstop, and uh, the run scored, and, and, of course, the runner goes to first. So we're not out of the inning yet. Batter is Chris Peasley, the first baseman. We talked a little bit about him last time, but he's a junior. played uh, basketball and football. Country music fan, uh, likes the Red Sox, video games, and, and uh, uh, not only playing football, he really, really enjoys football. So... Um, 
Another big kid. He's uh, maybe yeah. six four. Yeah, six, big boy. Six five. Ball was in the dirt two and zero. Oh. The ball's hot. Got to be hard to throw. Yeah, it's hard to throw, hard to catch. And uh, Stephen Murphy's been uh, scooping some up in the dirt and had trouble with a couple in the dirt. There's a strike, two balls and one strike. You know, in weather like this, these games could go either way. Yeah, it. Uh, it you know, sometimes it's just a break here or there. Um, but again, some sometimes the the weather can be the difference between a um, a catch or a throw or somebody sliding going around a bag. Uh, you just never know. So, um, but again. Both teams run in the same conditions, so it is what it is. Three balls, one strike, and that's ball four. Peasley is on, and uh, Chip Rourke's going to go to the mound right now. He's going to talk to his pitcher. Think he's going to make a make a swap right here. Uh, you think Rondo comes in at this point? Can't tell you. out there talking to yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't seem to be making that move quite yet uh, he is talking to Bryce whether he's trying to kind of get him in back in the game a little bit or it's a pitch runner at uh, second base number four comes in uh, to run for Plainfield that would be Kyle Holt coming in second base another uh Another football and basketball player. He was actually one of their their uh, very successful running backs. Brings up the pitcher, Matt DeRozier, who um, has a single back in the second and got on an, um, actually two for two. He's had two singles. Chip Rourke just had his conversation with Bryce Valeski, his pitcher, and uh, first pitch is a strike. And the ump calls time. I think DeRosia um, didn't feel comfortable up there and, and asked for, for timeout. Sometimes it's just timing. You know, you, you have that, that rhythm between the catcher and the pitcher. Ball was in the dirt, bounced off of the chest protector of Stephen Murphy. Uh, the, the runner, both runners took off. And a throw to third to Nick Gilo was just not in time just late. So you, now you have runners on second and third for uh, DeRozier, who's two for two, and that ball's in there for a strike one and two. So a base hit here really could open it up for the Panthers in this ball game, who's up four to nothing right now. Ugh. Pass ball. Another pass ball, and uh, another run scored for the Panthers. Panthers are up five to nothing. Now you have another runner on third. And the way Matt DeRozier, uh, DeRozier's is pitching today, yeah, uh, that's going to be a, a that's you might as well be a hundred to nothing. Yeah, it seems that way through the through the first five anyway. Things change quick and change quickly, but um, true. Yeah, Matt Matt DeRozier's pitching uh, pitching a gem right now. One ball, two strikes, and there's a bouncer. Stramiska dives, throws it over to Molesky, who's covering first for the third out of the inning. Plainfield, they score some more. Uh, after five, Plainfield leads Grizzled by the score of five to nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball right here on Wolverine Radio. Eastern Savings Bank has a home loan that's right for you. Let one of our experienced lending professionals help you find the loan that best fits your needs. For more information, visit our lending center at eastern-savings.com. Stop by any of our convenient branches or call 860-889-7381 to schedule an appointment. Eastern Savings Bank. Local lenders, local decisions, with offices in Norwich, Jewett City, and Plainfield. Eastern Savings Bank. Because it matters. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Thinking about buying or building a home? 
At Jewett City Savings Bank, we have mortgage programs to help you finance the home of your dreams. This is Kevin Merchant, President and CEO of Jewett City Savings Bank. And I want to tell you that as your neighborhood bank, Jewett City Savings Bank is dedicated to help you achieve your home ownership goals. That's why we offer a full range of fixed and adjustable rate mortgage programs in a variety of terms to meet almost any need and to fit within your budget. If you're thinking about building your own home, we offer land and construction loans to put your plans into action. In fact, with our all-in-one construction loan, you can finance the purchase of the land and the construction of your home in one smart program, saving you both time and money. Whatever your home borrowing needs, you can count on our team of helpful home financing experts to be there to guide you and assist you every step of the way, just like you'd expect a neighbor to do. Let us help you get started. Call us at 860-376-4444. Stop by your nearest branch or visit us at JCS Bank. Bank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. And welcome back to Plainfield High School. Mike Minarski and Kevin Merchant uh, broadcasting live as the uh, Griswold Wolverines are taking on the Plainfield Panthers uh, here in a very wet, damp, uh, just gray Saturday afternoon. Uh, Plainfield up five to nothing here in the top of the sixth. The game has uh, has been all Matt DeRosier, uh, Michael. Um, yeah. He he. Looking back, he has not. They have not had. Grizzle has not had a base runner since the first inning, and yeah. it is now the top of the sixth. They had two runners in the first, and since that time, they've gone down one, two, three, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So, um, Grizzle needs to do anything they can to get uh, get some runners on base. Yeah, they did. You're exactly. They they need base runners, which is something that they've they've lacked pretty much all game. Uh, they had you know they got a base runner in the first, and uh, when. Uh, yeah, uh, Bryce Molesky gets in on the first, and there was a, an error, <laughs> error uh, where Nate Tedeschi got on in the first, and that's been it. That's yeah. been it. No runners. Uh, uh, Matt Verugia hasn't even had to pitch from a from a stretch since the yeah. first inning. Oh, and one to Alan Rondo, and here's the pitch, and there's another foul and out of play. No balls and two strikes, and that's the other thing too. He's been ahead of every single batter. He's been very economical with mm. his pitches today. Yeah, very, very efficient. Uh, he's, he's got a great, a great. Uh, he's got great mechanics. Good wind up. The good thing is, you know, with uh, pitchers, especially at this age, that ball was uh, on the elevator, straight on up, and and uh, that ball was uh, swing and a miss, strike three. This was uh, DeRosa's third strikeout. What I was going to say was uh, he, he, he has the same motion with every pitch, which is really yeah. important because uh, a lot of times if you if you vary your motion for different pitchers, whether it's a changeup or whether it's a cutter or, or a curve, uh, the batter can pick that up. But coming from the same motion every pitch and having different pitches, uh, you can't you can't uh, you can't time the ball as much, well that way. Gregory is up uh, with a bouncer to short. Easy play over to first. Two quick outs here in the top of the sixth. He just keeps mowing them down here, Michael. If he, yeah, he's a lot of ground ball outs. How many ground ball outs? A have, to bunch. Ask, have to ask Kevin Thompson. I don't know. Here's Bryce Molesky <laughs> to the plate, uh, the owner of the only Wolverine hit today. And that was back in the first inning. Back in the first, and he flew to uh, left field in the third, and is now. There's a fly ball to center field, and uh, could be trouble. No, nope. uh-huh. he's got it. Great defense by Plainfield this afternoon too. That was yeah. a that was a nice catch by um, Brendan Ogden out in center field. So that's been pretty much the story of this ball game. I mean, uh, DeRozier has been very economical with his pitching. I mean, that was the first pitch hitting Bryce Molesky flying out to center. And uh, that's going to end it in the top of the six. We're going to go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Plainfield now with a commanding lead in this one uh, here from Plainfield High School. They're leading five to nothing. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. Don't just wish for a winning deal. Make it dish. Hey everyone, 
This is Ellis Dish from Dish Motors. We're back better than ever with our new sales and service center on Route 32 in North Franklin. Everyone says there's nothing better than dealing with the dishes, and here's why. Selection. We have the area's largest inventory of off-lease, one-owner vehicles of all makes and models. You name it, we got it, or I'll get it for you at no additional charge. Quality. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous 120-point safety and quality check. Nothing leaves the lot without my personal approval. Convenience. We have financing sources for almost any situation. We offer on-site registration processing, and we have maintenance programs for years of stress-free ownership. And now open for all your maintenance needs, our full-service repair facility, where oil changes start at just $19.99. Call today for your appointment or just stop by. So save thousands and deal with the dishes. Route 32, North Franklin. Online, thriftycarsct.com or ring us, 860-383-4750. Went to, he scored the first run of the game. And we're back here at Grizzle High School. Uh, Mike Bonarski, Kevin Merchant, and we're just talking in between uh, innings here. And, uh, you know, hopefully to, hopefully we'll have uh, some players uh, for the for our post-game report. Uh, and uh, oh, hold on a second there, bud. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just happen to be talking on the air. And, and uh, hopefully we're going to have some people, you know, come over. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how the game turns out. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's five to nothing right now, playing field. On the other hand, um, hey, you never know, and uh, weather conditions can play a role. But we do have a new pitcher for the Griswold Wolverines. Uh, Logan McGowan comes on in place of Bryce Molesky here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Um, I don't have all the stats on Bryce, but. Uh, yeah, he he was the victim of a few walks, uh, a couple of errors, a couple of pass balls, because uh, Plainfield with five runs only has three hits on the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, I'll tell hits. you, I'll tell you, Merch. You know, even though it is five to nothing, it, it it's uh, it's been a little bit. Uh, they've had a, they've had some tough luck fielding, and I don't think Bryce pitched that bad at all. No, so. no, it, it was just uh, extra base here, <laughs> extra base there, a uh, couple of pass balls, um, a swinging strike three, uh, and. and and the, the batter uh, gets the first base and ends up scoring. Um, There's a fly ball uh, into the infield. Uh, underneath it is Gregory. And he brings it down for out number one here in the bottom of the sixth. That's actually Alan Rondo over there, too, if uh, Gre- Gregory is still... Uh, no, well, Gregory's uh, moved. Oh, he's moved. His, he does. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. Yeah, um, just because I think... Uh, Where did Bryce go? Is he Bryce short? Is short. Bryce short? is okay. short. Okay. One down. That was ac- actually Alex uh, DeAngelis, by the way. Next batter is Keegan Marcou, who, um, who uh, another football player. He's a junior for the Panthers. He's he's a big Yankee fan. He loves working out, and he likes punch music. One ball, one strike here in the uh, top of the bottom of the sixth. Five-nothing playing field. Uh, Panthers uh, have led throughout, obviously, since uh, Griswold has only been able to manage one run. And there's a, a long, long drive. That's, that's ooh, almost out of here. That just hits at the bottom of the fence. And uh, he's going to go all the way to third with a triple. And he's in there safely as the ball comes into uh, Nick Gilo at third. That ball was jacked. That was smoked. We thought from our van, from my vantage point, I thought that ball was out of here. And it, and it wasn't coming down. It wasn't no. coming down. Uh, right, right fielder um, Brendan Doyle out there just turned around and started running the other way. And that's only the fourth Panther hit of the day. And that was a low one. Again, Keegan Marcoux, he did say he liked working out. That kid's a strong kid, good football player, good kid, really good kid. He's been, uh, he's actually been to uh, to our house. For, with our my stepson, I've like, never been to your house. No, no, well, never been invited. Oh, here's Ben Leach. We'll have to <laughs> the catcher. We'll have to fit you in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me home today if you want. <laughs> like, like a stray dog. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we, we probably got a few scraps from around the house. <laughs> I just need a bowl. <laughs> one bowl, one strike, one out here in the uh, bottom of the sixth. Uh, that ball is outside two and one. That was the hardest hit ball all day. Yeah. And it was funny when he hit the ball because we're under the easy up here. When he hit the ball, I thought he hit it off the end of his bat. It almost was a more of a clunk instead of a real yeah. solid hit off his bat. And then when I saw which way it was going and I saw uh, I saw Doyle out there turn around, I said, ooh, that's a that's a bomb. 
Three balls, one strike, and that's ball four. No runners at first and third here in the uh, bottom of the sixth. There's only one with out. One out. Keegan Marku at third base, and Ben Leach now on at first. With the batter, Brendan Ogden, the center fielder for the Plainfield Panthers. Here's number five. Wearing number five, and uh, you can even tell even on the uniforms, the Plainfield uniforms are much more dirty. They've, they've had much more opportunity. Well, well what's, what's kind of funny, what's kind of funny, Mike, is when you look at just about every one of the uniforms, the pants are a different color than the shirt. The, the shirt is bright white, and the pants are kind of an off-white, and that's because these kids take their p- uniforms home to their mom by sliding, and, and you can't just can't get those pants clean, Michael. You just can't get them clean. One and one to Ogden, the center fielder here for the Panthers. Run is on first and third here in the bottom of the six five nothing Panthers wow. lead, and he's coming to steal. I home knew and, that wow. was happening. I was just going to say, Michael, Mark, who is really getting down the line, really getting down the line, and it was um... Mark who steals home, and uh, now they're just pulling everything out, and it's six nothing Panthers. Leach moves to second, and uh, Ogden is on at first. And we have Chip, the uh, is calling. Chip works calling time at the top of the order. Yeah, Michael, I'm not sure what what that was. It, it wasn't it wasn't ball four. <laughs> he was stealing first. Well, if it hit him, then then the batter then the runner can't score if the ball hit him. The the uh, the playing field coach is is saying that the ball hit Ogden, but if it had, it would have been a dead ball, and Marcou couldn't yeah. have scored. Uh, I thought it was just a ball, and Marcou just just stole home. That's what I thought too. Oh, so he's going to confirm. Yeah, now the umpires are, are getting together here. And I think I found a ticket to tonight's uh, Little Mermaid. Good for you. You, you know what? If if I bring it and and I rip it in half, will that be two? So I can get my wife in. Um, she already saw the play. Well, since she saw it already, then that should work, right? You say, I've seen it, so I'll oh, just come on in then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can try. That I've seen be- you do um, sneakier things. I have not. <laughs> So Brendan Ogden is still at the plate with a two and one. That's exactly what I have down here, two and one. I'm not sure why he went to first base, but um, he's trying to steal first. He was trying to steal first. He said, "Hey, if Keegan can steal home, I, I can, can steal, steal first. first. <laughs> and and Marku is it was funny because just before the pitch, I almost said to you, Michael, that uh, Marku is way down the line, and uh, he just stole home. six nothing. <laughs> Is your score here in the uh, bottom of the six, and and uh, the pitcher just uh, went off the mound a little bit to try to keep the runner at second base uh, fairly close. And there's a pop up right back to the pitcher, and they're going to send it to second base and double up. That's our second double play of the game. So uh, McGowan catches the uh, little pop up uh, back to uh, the mound off of the bunt, and uh, that's a uh, one. Six double play, but the Panthers do get another run uh, on a, uh, uh, a runner stealing home. As uh, Merch was saying, he was way down the line and then uh, just came dashing on in. And uh, we're going to go to the top of the seventh, last chance for the Grizzled Wolverines here in a, uh, a rainy, wet Saturday afternoon at Plainfield High School. And Brendan and uh, DeRozier back on the mound once again to uh, to clean it up for the Panthers. Top of the seventh coming your way. It's Wolverine Baseball on Wolverine Radio. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today at 860-376-0611. 
Eagle, Mike Monarski, Kevin Merchant. Uh, this uh, this game has uh, gone all the way of the Panther as uh, they are up six to nothing here in the top of the seventh. Uh, the uh, Wolverines have uh, had a uh, rough go of it pretty much all game. They only have one hit today off of uh, Matt DeRozier, uh, which was a uh, first inning uh, base hit from Bryce Molesky. Uh, there has been nothing after that. And uh, Matt DeRozier has been very economical with his pitches. Most innings getting out in, uh, I'm going to, you know, I counted one, it was seven pitches. You know, seven, eight pitches. So. Well, the uh, the Wolverines haven't had a base runner since the first inning. Um, he, he's just been chugging along here. Uh, again, as you said, very economical, very efficient with his pitches, uh, has great motion, uh, doesn't throw a lot of balls. I mean, he throws uh, a lot of strikes and he hits corners and he mixes up his pitches. And, uh, you, you, boy, uh, Plainfield couldn't have asked for anything more than uh, Matt DeRocher on the mound today doing what he's doing because uh, Griswold coming off a five-game winning streak, uh, I'm sure, came in here with some, with some confidence. Yeah. And they run into, uh, they run into Matt DeRocher out there in the mound and, and, and just can't, they can't get on base. They, they haven't had a base runner. Yeah. And the biggest tragedy of them all is I can't find a ticket to the Little Mermaid tonight. Uh, that's probably oh, you the need biggest one thing, more yeah. ticket. You did find no, I didn't get it. No, that ticket was gone. It was gone within thirty seconds. I'm not kidding oh. you. That's I've never seen that. Well, then you, are, you, I have to tell you, Michael. You, if you don't go, you are missing one of the best yeah. shows that the Griswold Drama I'm, Program has had put on. We, that's the way it looks. We went on Thursday, uh, and it was absolutely overwhelming. Amazing, amazing what those kids do. Um, it, it, it's crazy. You'd, you'd never think that these are just regular old high school kids. Here's the first pitch to Stephen Murphy, inside ball one from DeRozier, who's uh, pitched one heck of a ball game. Again, only one hit off of DeRozier. Uh, Stephen Murphy uh, wasn't the, the, the lucky the lucky hitter, Bryce Molesky, so Stephen Murphy's 0 for 2 coming in here at seventh inning. And it's a strike right down the middle. 1-1 one one to Murphy. Grizzly having a tough time behind the plate today. Yeah, it's it's tough tough day to catch. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of balls in the dirt, some pass balls. Curveball, one two boy, you know, one ball, two strike. Nice pitch. He just dropped that curve right in. Derosia doesn't bring a lot of heat, but uh, he's got great command and uh, spots the ball. Two and two. That was high and inside, and uh, this is probably the loudest I've heard the grizzled Wolverine. Uh, bench all day. Well, they need a rally. A big one. They need a big one. Down six runs, uh, bottom, top of the seventh. Three and two curveball inside. Look, I didn't quite break. Tell you what, Michael, uh, looking at my book here, I'm not sure uh, he has had three balls uh, on no. any on any batter today. Not to say he's getting tired, but he could be getting a little tired out there. That's high and inside ball four. So uh, DeRozier, and I think that is a, a, a good call, Merch, because uh, is that his second walk? Uh, I think he's walked one already. Did he first walk? walk. First, first walk, walk of the, of the game. day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had two base runners in the uh, in the first inning uh, on a on a single by Bryce Molesky and Nate Tedeschi got on on an error on the third baseman, and it's been all DeRozier since then. So this is uh, his first base runner since the first inning. So uh, Nate Tedeschi steps in uh, with Stephen Murphy on at first base. The Wolverines trying to get something going here. They haven't had anything going all day. And uh, that's pitch- he's pitching from the stretch. And that's a base hit to right field. Murphy is going to round second, and he's going to go all the way to third. So now the Wolverines have waited till the seventh inning to go ahead and get something started. As they have runners on first and third, nobody out. And uh, Nick Gilo coming to the plate. And the playing field coach out onto the mound going to talk to, uh, well, his entire team, apparently. Well, the infield's all in. Want to make sure what they're going to do with this. Up six to nothing. Don't uh, You'll let don't, the run score. Don't make yeah. Don't don't make a a, a silly throw to home uh, when you really just need to get it out right now. You need to get uh, you need to get three outs. Get the force play. Play right. for two. Let the run score. All right. Shut out. Shut out would be nice, but yeah. uh, the win is 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 much better. And you don't want to get in a situation here where things start falling apart. 
Uh, yeah, because really, the I mean, Panthers. The, the runner at third means nothing as far as playing field is no, concerned right no, now. No, that's why he's just assuring his kids. He's <laughs> telling his kids, hey, that guy over there, don't even worry about him. Get get the sure out. They need a sure out right now. His first pitch to g high and outside, ball one. Now, Tedeschi's very fast. Do you send him, or do you keep him? You know, I don't think so, because he's yeah, not an important him, yeah. yeah, he's not an important runner there. You know, there's a few guys that, uh, about several into the bench, that are the important guys. Um, you can't take the chance. Again, if they don't care about the guy on third base, you know, Leach makes a nice throw to second base and gets him out, yeah. and now you wasted you wasted a runner out there. And that's what that's what Grizzle needs. They need to get runners moving around the bases in different, and, and put, put the Panthers on their heels a little bit, put them in a different position where, uh, you know, uh, runners circling the bases can uh, can can confuse you, and he does go. And there's a there's a base hit to left field, and that's going to score one run. And Tedeschi is going to wheel it into third, and that's going to send. Oh, they called him out at second base as Gilo tried to stretch a single into a double, and uh, they got him. But one run did score, and uh, Tedeschi pulls up at third. So now the score is six to one, one down. And here's Stramiska. So two hits in this inning against DeRosia, who has yeah. been uh, throwing a jam and run scored. Still run around third base, but uh, having Gilo thrown out at second, that 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 hurt. That hurt the Wolverines. He's getting the ball up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think he's sitting, getting, yeah. and that's Get that's normally sure. that's normally uh, an indication that you, you're tiring out. And yeah. again, he's put uh, he's put six and a third innings up there um, on the, in the books. So, and Stramiska, he loops one right to the second baseman. That's going to be out number two. So now we're down to their final out here in Plainfield. And uh, Stramiska not happy with himself as he chucks the helmet. Well, all these kids are competitive. You know, you yep. got you a runner, Absolutely. At, runner at third base. You know, every run counts. Every base counts. And uh, hey, he was trying, helmet or two. trying to get that hump run home. So Jerozier one out away from uh, from finishing up a gem. Brendan Doyle at the plate, who was um, 0 for 2 uh, with a fly out and a strikeout. And Tedeschi at third. That ball is outside, so it's two balls and no strikes. As we talked... Um, Matt Rose is, is, is not a, is not one of the big kids on the team. He's one of the smaller kids on the team. There's a fly ball off third base, but that's going to go out of play. Two balls, one strike. Well, at least the Wolverines did get on the ball, uh, get on the board. Yeah, come back in the seventh. Again, base runners. You can need any base runners. You, can, you know, you can't can't score without get, getting uh, getting runners on. And uh, a couple of back-to-back -back singles by Tedeschi and Gilo. Got that run in. On Earth Day. Yes. Which, shh, be quiet, because uh, we've actually been pretty good uh, pretty good weather here for the last maybe 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Thank goodness. Three balls, one strike to Doyle. We're in number 14 for the Wolverines. It's been a constant... Uh, uh, Exchange of baseballs here today. They take ball, you know, wet balls, bring them into the home team dugout, and dry them off, carry them back out to the umpire. And you know what's funny is is that uh, I don't think another thing that people don't look at too is even though the ball get may get a little bit wet and stuff, that changes the weight of the ball, which is a lot oh, harder. Sure. You know, even that slightest an ounce, an ounce and a half added to the ball, it's a, it's harder to pitch. Yep. Three and one. Here's the pitch and swing and strike two. So now we have a full count here in the top of the seventh with two outs. Wolverines down to their final strike. Doyle steps in. DeRozier pitching from the full windup. And here's the windup and the pitch. Swinging strike three. Foul tip into the mitt of the Plainfield catcher. And that's going to do it here at Plainfield High School as the Panthers take out the Wolverines by the score of 6-1. to one.
We're going to be back in a minute uh, with some uh, wrap-up, and hopefully we'll have a couple of players that we'll be able to talk to in a bit as well. You're listening to Wolverine Baseball right here on Wolverine Radio. Hey there, this is Pastor Josh from Quinnebog River Church inviting you to join me right here on Wolverine Radio every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for the River Church Radio Hour. It's an hour of contemporary Christian music and biblical thought. I'm the biblical thought part of it, and some amazing Christian musicians provide the music, and it's a great time together on air here on Wolverine Radio. Of course, you can always find us live in the Grizzled Middle School Auditorium every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or anytime online at gotoriverchurch.org. Goodbye. time of the year and the burns agency is wishing all of our loyal customers a happy and healthy holiday season if you haven't already add calling the burns agency to your list of resolutions start 2017 off of the savings and let us help you revisit your insurance needs showing you what quality coverage and unbeatable prices can do for you in 2017 happy holidays from the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 And welcome back to Plainfield High School, everyone. Uh, we just watched, uh, you know, a game between the Grizzled Wolverines and the Plainfield Panthers. The Grizzled Wolverines uh, have seen their five-game winning streak come to an end uh, at the hands of the the uh, Plainfield Panthers uh, by the score of six to one. We're going to get a couple of players from the uh, Plainfield Panthers come on over and talk to us in a little bit, and uh, more to come. Keep it right here. It's uh, Wolverine baseball right here on Wolverine Radio. Town & Country Discount Oil is a family-owned company providing reliable and dependable service since 1996. Town & Country is licensed and insured with top-notch customer service and a well-trained staff servicing your residential and commercial needs. Town & Country strives to get you everyday low prices year-round. So call them, 860-376-6008, or check them out on the web at Town & Country Discount Oil, LLC.com. Town & Country Discount Oil, delivering safe you'll warm up to. Don't just wish for a winning deal. Make it dish. It will make it real. Don't just wish. Make it dish. Hey, everyone. This is Ellis Dish from Dish Motors. We're back better than ever with our new sales and service center on Route 32 in North Franklin. Everyone says there's nothing better than dealing with the dishes, and here's why. Selection. We have the area's largest inventory of off-lease, one-owner vehicles of all makes and models. You name it, we got it, or I'll get it for you at no additional charge. Quality. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous 120-point safety and quality check. Nothing leaves the lot without my personal approval. Convenience. We have financing sources for almost any situation. We offer on-site registration processing, and we have maintenance programs for years of stress-free owner. And now open for all your maintenance needs, our full service repair facility, where oil changes start at just $19.99. Call today for your appointment or just stop by. So save thousands and deal with the dishes. Route 32, North Franklin. Online, thriftycarsct.com or ring us, 860-383-4750. Don't just wish, make it dish. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today at 860-376-0611. Hey there, this is Pastor Josh from Quinnebog River Church inviting you to join me right here on Wolverine Radio every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for the River Church Radio Hour. It's an hour of contemporary Christian music and biblical thought. I'm the biblical thought part of it, and some amazing Christian musicians provide the music, and it's a great time together on air here on Wolverine Radio. Of course, you can always find us live in the Grizzled Middle School Auditorium every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or anytime online at go to riverchurch.org. 
And we're back here at Plainfield High School. Uh, a very wet game today. The uh, the rain starts, it stopped, it started, it stopped. It got real heavy at times, but uh, they both teams forged through, and uh, they did get the ball game in. Uh, the Wolverines, uh, tough day uh, for them. What, you know, of course, seeing their five-game winning streak come to a halt. Uh, only uh, one run, which they got in the seventh inning on uh, three hits in the afternoon, two in the uh, in the top of the seventh. Uh, so they got one hit in the uh, the first inning, and then they got two in the seventh. Uh, Plainfield was able to capitalize on a bunch of uh, unfortunate miscues uh, by uh, the Wolverine defense today. But, you know, it, it, it's one of those games where the weather uh, is just so bad that you just don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, the rain was coming down heavy at times. You know, unfortunately, like, uh, uh, there was a fly ball to, to, to uh, Tedeschi in uh, center field, and the rain was just pelting down, and there's I'm surprised that he even came close to the ball. Uh, but uh, that scored a plain field run as well. But they, they played, and uh, uh, it, was a, it was a much better game uh, than the, the score indicates, 6-1. Uh, to one. Bryce Molesky actually seemed like he uh, had a, a rough start for the first inning, uh, not being able to... Um, he got out of the innings and everything, but he, you know, a couple of plain field runners got on. But he, he did hold them. Uh, right on through, and then uh, a bunch of pass balls and a couple of wild pitches, you know, after some walks. And, you know, when that happens, you know, when a runner goes, you know, gets on base from a walk, and then a pass ball to second, wild pitch to third, and uh, then a bouncing ball to second base scores a run. So it was that kind of ball game uh, between uh, the Wolverines and the Panthers. Uh, Kevin Merchant is over on the... Uh, the Panther side right now uh, is going to go ahead and uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get uh, um, Matt DeRozier, the, uh, the Panther pitcher from today, who pitched one heck of a ball game. So we're going to have that coming up in uh, just a little bit. So uh, Wolverine Baseball right here on Wolverine Radio. Town & Country Discount Oil is a family-owned company providing reliable and dependable service since 1996. Town & Country is licensed and insured with top-notch customer service and a well-trained staff servicing your residential and commercial needs. Town & Country strives to get you everyday low prices year-round. So call them, 860-376-6008, or check them out on the web at Town & Country Discount Oil, LLC.com. Town & Country Discount Oil, delivering sales. Savings you'll warm up to. Don't just wish for a winning deal. Make it dish. It will make it real. Don't just wish. Make it dish. Hey, everyone. This is Ellis Dish from Dish Motors. We're back better than ever with our new sales and service center on Route 32 in North Franklin. Everyone says there's nothing better than dealing with the dishes, and here's why. Selection. We have the area's largest inventory of off-lease, one-owner vehicles of all makes and models. You name it, we got it, or I'll get it for you at no additional charge. Quality. Each vehicle goes through a rigorous 120-point safety and quality check. Nothing leaves the lot without my personal approval. Convenience. We have financing sources for almost any situation. We offer on-site registration processing, and we have maintenance programs for years of stress-free owner. And now open for all your maintenance needs, our full-service repair facility, where oil changes start at just $19.99. Call today for your appointment or just stop by. So save thousands and deal with the dishes. Route 32, North Franklin. Online, thriftycarsct.com or ring us, 860-383-4750. Don't just wish, make a dish. In today's world, so many businesses pass themselves off as an ordinary business. But if something special is what you're looking for, don't settle for anything less. LBP Hair Design is a lot more than a typical salon. With a professional team dedication to reach your beauty goals from your skin to your hair. The point is they understand and care how you look and take that seriously. Men, that includes you too. Stop in and experience this exciting salon. LBP Hair Design, located at 91 Slater Avenue in Jewett City. Neighbors to our very own Wolverines. Give them a call to make an appointment today at 860-376-0611. 
this is Pastor Josh from Quinnebog River Church inviting you to join me right here on Wolverine Radio every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for the River Church Radio Hour. It's an hour of contemporary Christian music and biblical thought. I'm the biblical thought part of it, and some amazing Christian musicians provide the music, and it's a great time together on air here on Wolverine Radio. Of course, you can always find us live in the Grizzled Middle School Auditorium every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or anytime online at GoToRiverChurch.org. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and the Burns Agency is wishing all of our loyal customers a happy and healthy holiday season. If you haven't already, add calling the Burns Agency to your list. Wolverines uh, uh, lose. Uh, to the Panthers by the score six to one, and one thing really came to mind today, uh, and actually a couple of people, uh, uh, your wife being one of them, <laughs> uh, brought this to to my attention, and this is very very true. Um, Griswold and Plainfield, big time riv- rivalry, of course. You know, I mean, I'm a Griswold alumni from way back when, and it, it was it was the same then as well. So Plainfield has beat them in baseball this year. He ended the Plainfield ended the. Uh, football winning streak uh, against Grizzle this year, and uh, they beat us twice. They beat Grizzle twice in basketball. Yeah, so it's been a good year for Plainfield. You know, are Plainfield, yeah. For the well, hold on <laughs> for the for the rivalry. So it's been pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give my headset over to uh, Mr. Goble here from uh, the Panthers and Kevin Merchant. Take it away. Uh, thank you, Michael. Right on. All set? That can work. Okay, that's great. Hey, first of all, we have Jack Goble, and just uh, thank you and uh, for being here, and great game today. I'm sure you guys are pretty pleased about the outcome. Yeah, no, it's great. It's always fun to beat Griswold. Uh, it's always fun to win a baseball game. We've sort of been in a slump lately, so it was a good team win. Nice to come out here, use this to piggyback, and maybe ride a wave. Yeah, I, I think it brings you guys to 6-3 and three in the season. Yep. Uh, now 4-1 and one in Division 3, which I think you're tied with Griswold uh, for Division 3 and uh, ECC. Mm-hmm. And I believe Lyman may be ahead at 4, they may be 4-0 and all right now, yep. I believe. So uh, yep. so Griswold you know, goes down a, a notch, and you guys go up a notch. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you were uh, scored a first run today at a walk in the first inning, took a couple bases and, and scored a run. We thought uh, the way the game was going that you were going to be the winning run in the game. You yeah. really weren't. Yeah. But uh, also made a couple pl- nice plays in right field uh, in early innings. But uh, tell me a little more about the game. What do you, what do you, what do you think? How, how do you think this uh, guy, uh, DeRosia, did today? I think Matt DeRosia had his best outing of the season so far, but I think he's not done, and I think he can go out next time and have the same stuff. You know, he had great command of his fastball today. He looked nice. Um, there were a couple of line drives right back at him. I got scared. Ooh. Got it. Out in right field, it looked like a couple of balls might have hit him in the face, bounced off him, but he had the quick glove. Uh, he was hot at the plate. He was hot on the mound, so we just sort of piggybacked off that and uh, carried his energy. Use it to win. Uh, and like you said about... Oh, God. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Yeah. And like you said about the first inning, you know, we uh, we came out, we scored early, and uh, sort of set the tone for the rest of the game. I've never quite seen anybody wear a headset like you got it on there, Jack. But, uh, <laughs> but we'll keep, oh, there we that go, we got it good, right. got it good, got it good. And I know, uh, I, I know I, that I put it on wrong. I think I know what it is. Yeah, I know that you're excited about uh, us carrying the game today, mm-hmm. and I believe that Mike Minarski can tell you that it is going to be uh, on podcast uh, on, on on Wolverine Radio at some point. Uh, Sometime soon. It's recording, so I just want to show you right now, so you know I'm not kidding you. That uh, game is then recorded. You'll see it come up in a second. Mm-hmm. And oh, there it is. See? Wow. So it's been recorded. So that Wolverine Dash Radio is that what you do, Mike? Go on uh, the sports. So you guys can listen to all your heroics later on sometime. Oh yeah. But anyway, we want to move on, Jack. But uh, like I said, I knew you were excited about being being uh, having a radio station today, and what a great game for you guys to play yep. um, to to come out with a six to one win. And we just want to wish you good luck for the rest of the year. And right. thank you, and great game today. Thank you guys. Thank and you, you guys wanna... for coming out today. Okay, and thank us. you. Appreciate that. I want to yep. hand that over to Keegan, maybe. All right. Here, put it on this one. Keep the hat on. Yeah, look at that. There we go. 
We have the uh, Panther left fielder Keegan Marcou, who uh, most of us know as a as a great football player too. Uh, Want to talk to Keegan about his uh, sixth inning bomb to right field? Uh, tell you the truth, when you hit it, I, I thought it was kind of off the end of the bat. It was kind of a clunk, yeah. and then we see Brendan Doyle, the right fielder, turn around and start running towards the fence, and you just you just hit a bomb. Yeah. Tell me about that uh, swing. No, it did it did feel like it got off the top of the bat. I didn't think it would have gone. It's a good that thing you didn't hit it because it would have been on Route 12 if yeah. you'd actually got good good uh, the barrel on it. Yeah, that's for sure. No. But. So, yeah, it's had a nice hit. And what I really wanted to talk to you about, great hit, best hit of the day. Tell me about stealing home. What was that all about? It was it was supposed to be a squeeze. I was I was going anyway. It was a bad pitch. He pulled back. I had no choice to go. I was three-quarters of the way down. So. Well, it was funny because uh, we saw the pitch, and I was just saying to Mike, I said, my God, Mark, who's like three quarters of the way down? And all of a sudden, you took off. And that was kind of an odd play, too, because uh, the, the Brendan goes to first on a two and one count. And we're thinking, well, he yeah. couldn't have been hit because if he was hit, it would have been a dead ball and you couldn't have scored. Yeah. So he ended up calling him back. But um, but that that was just kind of an odd play. He had a, had a great hit. Steal home. We don't see that too much. Uh, again, maybe not intentional because he was supposed to yeah. uh, lay it down. Yeah. But he um, got by and yeah. I was able to. But 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 again on the on the game today feel pretty good about uh, these Panthers coming out and yeah. doing a good job right definitely yeah yeah so we just want to thank you again thank you so much have a great rest of your season thank great you. game today and now we uh, have the star of the game coming in we have uh, Matt DeRosier. Uh Matt, uh, I tell you what, you know, we, we were going on through the game and uh, you had a couple runners uh, get on in first inning. You go the next five innings, no runners on base. You, in the meantime, on offense, get a couple of nice singles. Uh, did score, the, the, the Wolverines did come back in the seventh and, and get a couple hits and score a run. But uh, you, were, you were in complete control out there on the mound today. Tell me about that. Uh, I was just feeling it. I compared all my pitches. Uh... I could throw the ball where I wanted it. Everywhere it, I wanted it, the ball's going. So. It, it certainly did look that way. We, we were talking, Mike uh, Mike was talking most of the time how efficient and economical you were with your pitches. You didn't throw a lot of balls. Uh, you seemed to be hitting your spots just like you wanted. You were mixing them up. You threw a, you, a lot of nice outside corner pitches, and then you'll drop the curveball in. But uh, you, you seemed like you were, you were just totally in control today. Definitely. Yeah, how'd you feel at the plate? Uh ball looked like a mailbox today. <laughs> That's funny. That's uh, funny. We've been on a hot, well, hitting, we've been hitting the ball well. Uh, we've lost a couple straight. Uh, hopefully today's a turning point in our season. Yeah, you. Uh, we were going back and looking at some of the games that you've won uh, by large numbers. I mean, you, you scored a lot of runs in a couple of games, so we knew you guys could hit the ball. And we, we also kept talking about, uh, you got you to but a bunch of big, strong kids on your team. You know, get a couple of tall kids, but they're all strong. And, and, and again, you have a few football players in the team. Young. Yeah, young, young team. You got a lot of juniors. Yep. Uh, so, so you do have a bright future. And, and again, I know uh, for a fact there's not much uh, better for a Plainfield kid to do is come out here and beat the beat the Wolverines. Yeah, uh, even though we're from Wolverine Radio, and we love those guys, and they are, they play hard too. But uh, for you guys to come out today and really, really kind of manhandle them, and and you, you just pitched a gem today, pitched a great game and uh i'm sure uh, everybody in that uh, got real proud of you uh so we want to just say uh, good luck uh thank great you. game today thank you good luck for us this season thanks thank for you. joining us we appreciate that appreciate it okay have a great day and that should kind of do it michael i think uh, you can wrap up uh for us uh you know we had three three uh three good uh performances by a couple of these kids uh, from Plainfield. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they come out with a 6-1 to win. Uh, happy to be here today uh, uh, doing the broadcast, uh, even though the Wolverines on the short end. But, you know, good game. Rough, some rough conditions we played under. But, um, yeah. you know, it is what it is. It and, happens. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that I, I said while you were uh, over there grabbing the... Uh, uh, the players come on over and talk to us. Is that you know this is one of those games? I said it earlier too. It could go either way. Uh, the way the the conditions were, uh, Molesky was not pitching a bad ball game. It no. wasn't that he was pitching bad. Uh, it was uh, Plainfield just capitalized on a bunch of miscues. Yeah, that, uh, that that grizzled had. I mean, you walk a runner, you know, then you get a pass ball, and then you get a wild pitch. All of a sudden, the runner's on third. You get a ground out, and then a runner scores. You know, so they just kind of manufactured runs today, uh, and. Uh, 
uh, there were a couple of uh, you know uh, errors out in the field. That playing field just capitalized on every single one of them. Yeah, they they took every base they could. Again, and you know, it, it has some circumstances with, uh, with with a little bit of weather things. Uh, Stephen Murphy had a little trouble behind the plate on a couple of pitches, uh, and and Plainfield did take every base they possibly could. Absolutely. That's what you have to be. You have to be aggressive. And then you know, on the other side of that, uh, you know, they they couldn't manufacture anything against uh, Matt DeRocha. Matt DeRocha just pitched a whale of a game. You know, he, he had a couple of hits on offense, but uh, he he just he just put the clamps on the Wolverines today. And and that was that was the game. That was the key to the game. The, well, it wasn't exactly game. an offensive gem. I mean, the, the Wolverines had one hit in the first inning. They got two hits at not until the seventh inning of the game. They ended up getting <clears throat> one run, you know, uh, through that all. Uh, Plainfield had six runs on five hits. Four, I, four yeah, hits. Four hits. Okay, I believe they on, only had four hits. Okay, to, so there were seven hits in the entire ball game yeah. today. So like I said, you know, they, they, they weren't, you know, knocking a cover off. Off the ball, except for that one triple oh that, was, that was uh, way out to uh, uh, to uh, right center field, which was the yeah. hardest hit ball of the game. Yeah, so, Brendan so, Marcou uh, really got a hold of that one. Yeah, so I, I really think the weather, you know, excuse I, me, Keegan Marcou. Keegan Marcou, I, said, Marcou, I, Marcou, I said Brendan. The um, the, the weather, you know, has a, was a huge factor in this game. However, the story of the game is definitely was definitely DeRozier on the mound for Plainfield. Uh, he didn't let any of it get to him uh, between, you know, being on the mound and uh, being, uh, you know, at the plates. Uh, it was it was really all about DeRozier today. Yeah, he was just in, in control out there, and we, we, we commented several times on how economical he was with his pitching, and yep. uh, he just, he, he even said, he said he, he hit his spots today. Yeah. Uh, he just he just was, uh, was able to hit his spots today. Wherever he wanted that ball to go, he was able to. And, uh, yeah, he just he just pitched a well of a game. Yeah. All right, that's going to wrap things up for us. We have, uh, you know, of course, the extended pre uh, the post-game show today. Uh, we want to thank all of our sponsors, of course, that uh, make it possible that uh, uh, we are able to do these games. Dish Motor Group, uh, River Church, Quinnebog River Church, uh, the Burns Agency, Eastern Savings Bank, uh, Putnam Pride and Griswold Pride, uh, Town and Country Discount Oil, and, of course, always, well, of course, we can't forget the Allstate Insurance. Uh, who uh, help support us here as well. And uh, nevertheless, always the Jewett City Savings Bank, uh, who's been there for us since day number one here at Wolverine Radio. So your final score uh, <laughs> in a wet and woolly game, uh, it's been a, really this whole weekend was like that uh, with the softball game yesterday and, of course, the baseball game today. 6-1, to one, Plainfield defeats Grizzled here in Plainfield, Connecticut at Plainfield High School. For Kevin Merchant, I'm Mike Monarski. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone, and have yourself a great rest of your weekend.